Thank you, Mr. President, for your articulate words. Now I am honored to invite Mr. Rifat Bijar Jiklolo, the respected president of Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey, and the outgoing president of DHCCI, to present his remarks and then hand over the chairmanship of DHCCI to Mr. Sheikh Fozle Fahim. Mr. Rifat Hizar Jiklolo, President of the Union Chamber of Co Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey. Thank you, brother. Honorable ministers, His Excellency the H Secretary General, Mr. Sheikh Fazla Har Fahim, President of Federation of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, Salam alaikum. I would like to welcome you all on behalf of the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey and the eight Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Let me thank our honorable ministers for being with us in this very important event. Turkey's Trade Minister Pekcan has a history of business world as an industrialist. I am glad to underline that Minister Pekcha for many years assumed the leadership of Top Women Entrepreneurs Council. I would like also to thank all ministers for being with us. I have great pleasure in extending greetings to all people of Bangladesh on the occasion of their country's 15th Independence Day. Inshallah, this pandemic will disappear soon and we will meet our friends, brothers and sisters physically. I would like to express my appreciation for the excellent work of the president of Bangladesh Chamber and his team in organizing such this forum. Ladies and gentlemen, the idea of cooperation among major Muslim developing countries was proposed by Professor Nejmettin Erbakan. May Allah bless his soul and grant him Jannah 24 years ago. I am proud once again to remind that Professor Erbakan was one of the presidents of the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey and TOBB. After 24 years, the D8 organization has developed and helped to deep and strengthen the relations between our countries. But of course, we all know that we need to do more. Turkey attached particular importance to D8 since its foundation. It took over the chairmanship of organizing by holding the ninth D8 summit in Istanbul on October 2017. On the 8th of April, the Turkish chairmanship is finally coming to an end through the 10th D8 summit in Bangladesh. Today, my DHCCAI chairmanship is coming to an end too. I am handing over the DHCCI term presidency to Sheikh Fahim. I wish success to the Bangladesh chamber and offer my support in the years ahead. Dear colleagues, with your great support and contributions during our term, the DA8 Chamber of Commerce achieved several important tasks. I am proud of this progress. First, first of all, after many years, we finally revised the statute of the DA8 CCI. We have a functioning organization now. Secondly, the Economic Policy Research Foundation of Turkey, TEPAL, completed a report on how to facilitate B2B interaction within the D8 framework. Based on that report, we managed to organize a business forum in Antalya 2018. The results of this business forum was presented as a joint step statement of the HCCI at the D8 Foreign Ministers Council meeting. Being invited for, to this foreign ministers meeting was a 
milestone for the D8 CCI to be recognized at the highest level. I want to take thank to Turkey's Foreign Minister Çavuşoğlu and all foreign ministers of our respected countries. Dear Secretary General, you have been very active and very supportive throughout these years. Wherever we organize a business event, you were always, always with us. I would like to thank you and your team. Honorable ministers, ambassadors, and dear participants, the prosperity of more than 1 billion population of the eight countries depends on economic strength. Before I conclude my speech, let me draw your attention to some major issues between our countries. You know very well that the eight member countries generate around $4 trillion GDP. We managed to export around $1.5 trillion. However, our intra-trade is only $110 billion. That is not enough. We need better trade and investment environment among our countries. We need to expand the scope of our preferential trade agreement. We need to have full participation of our member countries in this agreement. We need better physically and legal infrastructure for better connectivity. The most covered, the visa-free tra travel among our countries. For that reason, in addition to the responsibilities of our governments, a very important obligation is placed on DHCCI. We should be aware that this is the only umbrella organization of private sector within DA. Therefore, I am confident we will all have our brother Fazla Faim as the new DA CCI president in his work for the welfare of citizens. As the Mubarak Ramadan is approaching, I wish you all a happy, prosperous, and healthy Ramadan. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Rifat Bizar Jikliolo, for your enlightening speech. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Mr. Sheikh Fosle Faim on being the chairman of the eight chamber of commerce and industry. Now I request new chairman of the eight CCI, Mr. Sheikh Fosle Faim, to share his feelings. Mr. Sheikh Fosle Faim. My sincere thanks and appreciation to the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey, TOPS president and DCI's chairman, Mr. Rifat Bey. I had the opportunity of meeting him in 2018 in Antalya during the DHCCI business conference. We believe that uh, the heritage that he has built, we will, together with their support, with his mentorship, will take it further for connectivity to barter system of trade between the D8 nations, as was being prepared by the D8 Secretariat, and any other initiative where each of our nations can maximize each of our strength, such as knowledge, such as raw materials, such as production competitive edge of Bangladesh, and move the D8 initiative further to reach the goal of high economic and knowledge engagement. I thank all the ministers of the eight nations who has been extremely supportive in D8 CCI's initiatives. Uh, I am grateful and we believe it's a the heavy uh, responsibility that I'm taking from a, a mountain of, of, of a man who, is, who has been very successful in his endeavors in economic participation. And we will be in touch and work together to take the initiative further. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Fosli Fahim, new chairman of the DA Chambers of Commerce and Industry for your feelings. We hope you will continue your brilliant work as you always have with, you, with new spirit. We'll now watch another video presentation, FBCCI, on investment opportunities.
Oh, sorry, and Lulu, the outgoing president of the DA Chamber of Commerce and Industry, to share his feelings. Mr. Rifat Hizar Jikliolu, the outgoing DA Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Do you hear me? Yes, my brother. Now I have heard you. De uh, dear uh, brother Fahim, I am truly, truly honored and pleased to hand over the DHCCI chairmanship into your safe and capable hands. My support will always be available whenever you need it. I am sure that all the eight national chambers will continue providing their support. I hope that this pandemic will end soon and we will be able to have our meetings and business events face to face. I wish you a good luck and great success. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Rifat Hijarji Kliolo, for your uh, feelings about the hand over, handing over the uh, chairmanship of the DA Chambers of Commerce and Industries. Now we will watch another video presentation by BCCI on investment opportunities in Bangladesh. President FDCCI, Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Bangladesh Akmatro Shisho Banerji Shambhutan, FDCCI, Bangladesh Shokol Chamber among Association of the Media. CMSME take a largest sector represent Korea FDCCI. Agriculture, manufacturing, service. Quaternary or that ICT sector, Potinid to Kore, Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Pathshoe Othi Trade Association, O Chamber at Potinid to Kore, FBCCI. Aki Shate, FBCCI Air Akshobo Tristi Global Strategic Partner Ate, Jarmote, ICC, CACCI, SARC CCI, SRCIC, Ulik Joko. FBCCI Mandate Onojai, Member. Chamber, Association or Tadir Stakeholder in Puchni, Macro Level Economic Policy Advocacy, Policy Consultation, Trade Facilitation, Trade and Investment Promotion, Beshurkari Khatir Hoye, Protinitikore FPCCI. Duhajar Art Theke Duhajar B Shal Purjanto, Bangladesh GDP, Chasho percent Britti Pete, Aki Shate, Trade Growth Hoye, Dusho Cholish percent, Jake Bola Hoye Thake, Private sector led growth. Jatir Jonok Bongo Buntu Sheikh Mujibur Rahmaner Shujuk Gokona, Manonio Prodhan Montri Sheikh Hasinar Vishan Duhajar Ekush, Bangladeshke Modhumaye Deshe Purinotokora, SDG Duhajar Tirish Loko Matrai Pochano, Vishan Duhajar Ek Chulish, Bangladeshke Unnuto Deshe Dikenia, Digital Bangladesh Kora, A Shop Kichui, Bangladeshir Beshar Karik Hatke, দেশে সামগ্রিক অর্থনীতির উন্নয়নে সহযোগী ভূমিকা রাখতে সহায়তা করেছে আর সাথে সাথে দেশের অর্থনৈতিক চাকাকে এগিয়ে নিয়ে গিয়েছে বাংলাদেশের ডাইনামিক ও রেজিলিয়েন্ট বেসরকারি খাত যার নেতৃত্ব দেয় এফপিসিসিআই এফপিসিসিআই তার ঐতিহ্য ও অভিজ্ঞতাকে কাজে লাগিয়ে কোভিড-19 এর সময়ও প্রধানমন্ত্রীর দিক নির্দেশনায় 1 লক্ষ 24053 কোটি টাকার 23 টি প্রণোদনা প্যাকেজ বাস্তবায়নে বেসরকারি খাতের হয়ে নেতৃত্ব দিয়েছে এই ধারাবাহিকতায় বাংলাদেশের অর্থনীতি কোভিড-19 এর ধাক্কা সামলাতে সক্ষম হয়েছে বাংলাদেশের জিডিপি 5.24% বৃদ্ধি পেয়েছে এক্সপোর্ট 22.67 বিলিয়ন ডলারের বেশি হয়েছে রেমিটেন্স 14.9 বিলিয়ন ডলারের বেশি হয়েছে ফরেন রিজার্ভ 44 বিলিয়ন ডলারের বেশি হয়েছে FBCCI লক্ষ্য 2021 
যার লক্ষ্য বাণিজ্য সহায়তায় বিশ্বমানের দক্ষ জনশক্তিতে ব্যবসায় সহজীকরণে শিল্প বৈচিত্রে সঠিক মান নির্ধারণে ব্যবসায়িক সমন্বয়ে ক্ষুদ্র ছোট ও মাঝারি উদ্যোগে নতুন উদ্ভাবনে বৈশ্বিক স্টার্ট আপ ইকো সিস্টেমে ভ্যালু অ্যাড করা ইম্প্যাক্ট ফোর পয়েন্ট ও এর চারটি ভার্টিক্যাল হচ্ছে এফ বিসিসিআই এডিআর সেন্টার এফ বিসিসিআই টেক সেন্টার এফ বিসিসিআই ইকোনমিক অ্যাপ্লাইড রিসার্চ সেন্টার এফ বিসিসিআই ইনস্টিটিউট এফ বিসিসিআই ইম্প্যাক্ট ফোর পয়েন্ট ও বাংলাদেশের এল ডি সি গ্রাজুয়েশনের পরবর্তী সময়ের জন্য প্রযুক্তিগত প্রস্তুতি ট্রানজেকশন পিরিয়ড সহজীকরণ টেকসই উন্নয়ন লক্ষ্যমাত্রা অর্জন দু সালের মধ্যে ডিজিটাল বাংলাদেশ করা এবং ডেল্টা প্ল্যান দু হাজার একশো মোতাবেক জলবায়ু পরিবর্তন মোকাবেলা করতে সহায়ক ভূমিকা রাখবে ধন্যবাদ At this point, I would like to invite our guest of honor, His Excellency Ambassador Datu Kuzafar Kushari, respected Secretary General of D8, to share his values and thoughts with us. His Excellency Ambassador Datu Kuzafar Kushari, Honorable Secretary General of D8. Honorable Secretary General, do you hear me? I've seen him. Uh, Excellencies, uh, uh, our Secretary General is coming. May I have the honor to request you just for wait for one minute, please? Okay. সিও সাহেব আপনি নেক্সট স্পিকারে পারমিশন নিয়ে নেক্সট স্পিকারে যান তারপরে পরে ওনার কাছে ফিরে আসেন আই এম হ্যাপি টু ডু দ্যাট ফাইন ভাই থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ওকে আই থিং ক্যান উই ক্যান উই ক্যান ইনভাইট দ্য দাতো কুজাফর কুশারি সনরো সেক্রেটারি জেনারেল নেক্সট টাইম নেক্সট ইজ বি অ্যাজ নিস স্পিকার নাও আই এম ইনভাইটিং অ্যানাদার গেস্ট অফ অনার Our next uh, guest of honor is Our Excellency Jerry Sambuaga, Honorable Vice Minister of Trade and in, of Indonesia, to convey his valuable okay. words. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon. Greetings. A very good day to all of you. 
Honorable Ministers, His Excellency, Dr. A.K. Abdul Momen, Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, Her Excellency, Ms. Rusar Pikan, Honorable Minister of Trade, Republic of Turkey, His Excellency, Mr. Tipu Munshi, Honorable Minister of Commerce, Government of the Peoples of Republic of Bangladesh, His Excellency, Mr. Muhammad Shariar Alam, Honorable State Minister, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, Ambassador Dato Kujafar Kusari, Secretary General of the Developing Aid, and Mr. Sheikh Fazil, Fazil Fahim, our President, congratulations, and all the participants from the business and industries, government officials, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by thanking the Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry, the Union of Chambers of Commerce and Commodity Exchange of Turkey, and the eight Chambers of Commerce and Industry for organizing this important event, the Eight Business Forum on the sideline of 10 the Eight Summit 2021. I am humbled to share with you the government of Indonesia's view on developing aid cooperation, particularly those related to trade and businesses, in light of our effort to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Excellencies, honorable ministers, ambassadors, ladies and gentlemen, the D8's combined GDP amounts to 4 trillion US dollar. Its interest rate is valued at 10 billion US dollar and has a 700 billion US dollar of expert capacity. As projected by PricewaterhouseCoopers, by 2050, the eight member states will rank among the top 24 economies of the world. And with a combined GDP of 38 trillion US dollar, the D8 could become the world third largest economy. However, even though the D8 has been in existence for more than 20 years, the output gap is gapping and has been the case for many years. Trade and investment trends have underperformed and not fully materialized according to the huge potential there is. Further, the concrete cooperation of the eight countries in response to the pandemic is yet to be visible to many. And therefore, we have not yet utilized our instruments as we should have been. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in the current circumstances of global uncertainty and inequality, instead of pursuing a decoupling strategy which has never taken root in the first place, perhaps the better way would be to further diversify our portfolios, as well as forging and fostering strategic partnership to create more business opportunities. With regards to the trade and export capacity, the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed vulnerabilities in global supply chains. It causes significant damage to both domestic and cross-border supply chain operations. Therefore, most countries are compelled to reassess and reshape supply chain strategies to their domestic and global counterparts. Against the backdrop, Indonesia seeks to promote more collaboration with other countries to secure a resilient global economic recovery and growth. Affirming the significance of increasing the density of intra D8 trade as an alternative supply chains is indeed in line with the emerging ge geopolitics post COVID-19. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for a stronger, more reliable and sustainable supply chains among the eight members, I would like to highlight several important points. First, the D8 governments need to keep on sharing common concerns and seeking commitments to ensure the flow of goods and services among the eight countries. This involves commitment 
to reduce barriers to trade may include those related tariff reduction, avoiding export restrictions, and trade facilitation. Concrete collaborations should be made available through any feasible schemes and particularly within the context of DA trade and investment cooperation. Therefore, we need to seize the momentum to deliberate on agreements that would glue the eight countries even stronger in the post-pandemic recovery. As Indonesia has seized the momentum of the pandemic disruptions to the economic by enacting structural reform through the introduction of the omnibus law, I am confident that similar accounts could be replicated where relevant by other D8 countries. To this extent, we are ready to share with you our experience in navigating the pandemic turbulence to create better opportunities for trade and businesses. The second thing is to improve the D8 supply chain that shall include diversification of supply and automation in digital transformation sources to increase the nation's domestic and cross-border traceability. The need to adopt cutting edge technology and trading system is a necessity. By doing this, every value chain located among the eight countries can be more efficient and resilient. Third, the eight need to encourage close cooperation to support the private sector and facilitate the development of MSMEs and business startups. The government should shift their role from a regulator to facilitator for startups. In Indonesia, partnership between the government and ecosystem players continue to strengthen. Through, through this cooperation, we aspire to assist companies assimilate their brands, technical tools, and products into an ecosystem while allowing for MSMEs to plug in to a broader network of supply chains and the ecosystems. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia believes that it is really high time to step up to more a concrete cooperation within the aid where governments and private sectors can expand and create new opportunities in the field of trade and strengthen the achievement of the aspirations of our members in the decision-making process at the global level. On this great opportunity, I wish to reiterate Indonesia's firm commitment to take part in the communicated trade policy to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 under the aid collaboration. And at the same time, to lay a solid ground for economic recovery in the post-pandemic. Finally, I wish you all a successful meeting ahead and look forward to hearing the good result that contribute for the future of deep trade and investment. Thank you, and I wish you all safe and healthy. Thank you, His Excellency Jerry Sambuega for your eloquent speech. Now I would like to invite our next guest of honor, His Excellency Muhammad Shahriar Alam, MP, Honorable State Minister, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, of Bangladesh to present his remarks. Mr. Muhammad Shariar Alam MP, Honorable State Minister, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sheikh Fazli Fahim, um, uh, the new president uh, of the uh, DATCI and our president of the Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industries, uh, Mr. Uh, Rifat Hisarjik Lulu. Uh, President of the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey and outgoing chair of DHCCI. Uh, today's chief guest, uh, our own Honorable uh, Foreign Minister, uh, Dr. Abdul Momin, um, uh, Excellency Minister for Commerce uh, of Bangladesh, Mr. Tipu Munshi, uh, other ministers of the member states, uh, Secretary General of the D8 uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation, uh, Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good. Uh, afternoon uh, from Dhaka. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for kindly inviting me uh, to this important event uh, and for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, I consider it to be an excellent opportunity for me to say something at such an August gathering by the Federation of Bangladesh Chambers and Commerce and Industry accepting the chair of D8 Chambers of Commerce and Industry from the Union of Chambers 
uh, uh, and Commodity Exchange of Turkey. Uh, allow me to congratulate Mr. Uh, Sheikh Fazli Fahim for taking uh, over uh, this uh, responsibility uh, of steering the DHCCI uh, to the direction of prosperity uh, for the next two years. I'd also like to express my gratitude and uh, thank uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Hisar Jiglulu uh, for his successful leadership uh, of this esteemed trade body since the ninth uh, D8 summit uh, way back in 2017. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I'd like to thank you for convening the dialogue session at the time when this uh, D8 organization for economic cooperation is moving forward towards to make this intergovernmental organization capable of responding uh, to the challenges of present uh, and future. And this is not a very normal present, uh, as we all know. Uh, I would also like to thank the Secretary General of D8 uh, for allowing Bangladesh to facilitate this meeting at the time at the same time appreciate the proactive measures and initiative that the secretary general has undertaken to help chambers of commerce and industry of the d8 member states uh, flourish uh, in an uh, appreciable way as a whole world uh, is experiencing uh, an unprecedented uh, global uh, public health and economic crisis caused by covid 19 pandemic uh, the d8 cci needs to stand together uh, more than ever uh, to boost up the intra-trade among the member states. Uh, Bangladesh believes in a free, uh, equitable access to markets uh, for not only product but also services. Uh, Bangladesh uh, attaches high priority towards uh, democratizing element, uh, elemental access uh, to productive factors like finance and credit. The HCCI may play an important role in achieving uh, these targets. Uh, as the uh, uh, 4IR is transforming uh, the businesses, as you know, and you know, some of you already spoke about it, uh, Bangladesh finds tremendous opportunity in the D8 connectivity agenda and the action plan for boosting intra D8 trade and investment. Uh, we therefore remain steadfast uh, in our enthusiasm uh, as the lead country for facilitating uh, B2B connectivity within the D8 entrepreneurs and businesses. Uh, Excellencies, uh, uh, dear brothers and sisters, uh, Bangladesh uh, emphasizes uh, on the need for development of the SME sector uh, by investing in skill building, entrepreneurship, uh, apprenticeship, uh, and the need for market data availability and market access. Uh, DHCCI can co-design technological spaces where the development, incubation, and institutionalization of uh, breakthrough technologies are seamless and can cross-fertilize across functional boundaries. We believe that uh, innovation uh, takes place at the boundaries of our subject specific knowledge uh, and the business sector can play the key role in this regard. Uh, we should try also to overcome the impediments uh, to greater e-commerce and digital trade in the D8, uh, such as inadequate infrastructure to support e-commerce, insufficient skills, uh, to effectively use digital service, lack of awareness, and poor cybersecurity. Uh, therefore, it is now important to uh, develop an enabling environment for digital trade and boost the capability to participate uh, in goods related digital trade and digital services trade at the same time. The countries that uh, devoted their operations to digital uh, have able to fare better uh, than those who didn't. Uh, digitalization has become uh, necessary for business survival in today's world. Uh, this means that uh, governments will need to examine the priority barriers to ease the business environment for firms to engage in digitalization. Uh, excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, uh, uh, finally, I'd like to uh, assure, uh, and I'm sure Honorable Chief Guest, uh, uh, Honorable Foreign Minister, um, I, uh, in chief guest of today's event, uh, Foreign Minister of Bangladesh will agree with me that uh, the government of Bangladesh should be ready uh, to provide all our support uh, to the DHCCI. And as the uh, new chair uh, went on to express that it's it's a heavy responsibility. So we love to share some of those uh, heavy responsibilities to ease his journey for next uh, couple of years. Uh, during the chairmanship of D8, uh, Bangladesh plans to take the D8 to even further in terms of economic and social cooperation uh, among the member states. Uh, D8CCI will be an important partner in this.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum and good morning from Istanbul. It is an honor and great privilege for me to address this August gathering of the leaders of the business communities of our member states. To start by congratulating the FBCCR for the important meeting and business forum on the sidelines of the 19 sessions of the Council of Foreign Ministers and the 10 summit meetings. I would, I would also like to congratulate Mr. Fazli Fahim on your appointment as the President of the eight Chambers of Commerce and Industries. I have no doubt, sir, that your able and dynamic leadership will take the ACI to a new height of excellence in all fields of economic endeavors. I look forward to working closely with you in order to promote business to business contacts and public private partnerships among our member states, view to transforming profiting ideas into profitable enterprises. I would like to appreciate the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchanges of Turkey, so, and especially the President of Turkey, Mr. Rifat Hisaji Liulu, uh, for his able leadership, commitment, and devoted efforts in promoting the DA objective during this, his chairmanship of the DA Chambers of Commerce and Industries. The DHCCI registered many successes under the leadership of Mr. Hisa Sijaloglu. They include building consensus among the D8 business community that led to the adoptions of the D8 TCI statute. This is an outstanding accomplishment that will take D8 economic cooperation to the next level in the fullness of time. It is also under his leadership that the DHCCI issued a comprehensive report on how to facilitate B2B interaction within the D8 framework that was authored by the Economic Policy Research Foundation of Turkey or the path. In view of this accomplishment, the work that we should focus on is to implement the decision taken and the strategy adopted at the last business forum held in Antalya on 3rd of November 2018 on the sidelines of the 18 sessions of the Council of Ministers. This should be translated into concrete project and tangible outcomes. Therefore, as private equity investors and entrepreneurs, we should explore lucrative opportunities for trade and investment across the national frontiers of the D8 member states. Mr. President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you would certainly agree with me that the current global health situation is perilous and the challenges of the pandemics are plenty. All our member states are afflicted by the COVID-19 virus and their attention is now focused on mitigating this disease and, sa and saving the precious life of their citizens and protecting the national economies from its consequential adversities. As a result of the global health crisis, the economic and humanitarian cost is huge for our member states, and they are trying their level best to overcome this catastrophic situation. Therefore, I strongly believe that we should reiterate and solidify our commitment and cooperation as well as share our vast experiences and operational knowledge in order to mitigate the hardship imposed on, on us by COVID-19. In other words, I wish to solicit for your unassailable expertise and enormous resources in order to help the business community of the D8 member states to overcome the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Excellencies, distinguished delegate, I wish to assure you that the Secretariat is working tirelessly along with the D8 Health and Social Protection Program Office or D8 HSP, member states, philanthropic organization, research and development institution, United Nations agencies, and financial institution in order to provide immediate relief as well as equip the member states to deal with pandemics like 
COVID-19. It is in line with our efforts to respond to the COVID-19 crisis that the DA Secretariat, the HSP, and Chatham House jointly organized the first virtual roundtable of health professionals of the D8 member states on 16th of April 2020 in order to discuss the COVID-19 pandemic. Member states participated at the highest level and assured us of their unalloyed support and total cooperation in our efforts to stem the tide of the health and economic challenges posed by COVID-19. Mr. President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the pivotal importance of an enhanced engagement of the private sector in the activities of the organization as the main engine for growth of our economies cannot be overemphasized. As we have entered the second life cycle, which is the project implementation phase of the organization,
I would like to thank all the distinguished participants here in the forum, as well as the DA Chambers of, uh, and Commerce and Industry and the Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry as the hosting institutions. We also welcome hand submit of the D8 expected to be realized on the 8th of April with the participation of our heads of the states as ha has been underlined by the chairman of the TOBB. We hope to submit as well as this business forum will bring significant contribution to the multilateral cooperation among our countries at the D8 platforms. I greet you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Her Excellency Rukshar Pixan, for your brilliant insights. Now I request our next special guest, His Excellency Mr. Tipu Munshi MP, Honorable Commerce Minister of Bangladesh, to share his valuable words. Thank you, uh, the Honorable Chief Guest. His Excellency Dr. A.K. Abdul Momen, Honorable Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Government. It be to say something in, in such a high profile meeting. Thank you very much. I really cordially invite, I cordially welcome you all to the developing a business summit organized by Federation of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry, FBCCI, in partnership with D8 Chamber of Commerce and Industry, D8 CCI, as a sideline event of. D8 summit in Dhaka. <clears throat> so, I used to emphasize that this year D8 summit is especially significant for Bangladesh for three major reasons. Firstly, we are commemorating the birth centenary of the father of our nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Secondly, Bangladesh is celebrating 50 years of independence. And finally, I'm proud to mention that this year, United Nations Committee for Development Policy has recommended Bangladesh to be graduated from an LDC to developing country. We are proud to host this D8 summit virtually in this glorious year, 2021. As you are aware, Bangladesh is taking over the charge of next D8 chairmanship at Dhaka summit, hence, we hope that economic cooperation among the D8 member countries will be strengthened further as we have devised a, the Kenya roadmap which is aligned with the 2020-2030 agenda for development. Distinguished delegates, as you are <clears throat> also aware, we are in the midst of another wave of pandemic that has sent shockwaves through the global economy. However, we believe to overcome the negative effects of the pandemic with coordinated cooperation among the members of D8. We firmly hope that under the dynamic leadership of the upcoming chairman of D8, the Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, 
we will be able to overcome the challenges of COVID through the effective functioning of the D8 business platform. Distinguished delegates, the Federation of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry, FBCCI, is also taking the chairmanship of D8 Chamber of Commerce and Industry from the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchanges of Turkey in this Dhaka summit. Here I want to congratulate our uh, new uh, president of D8, Mr. Fazle Fine, for his new responsibilities. I hope that D8 Chamber of Commerce and Industry will work at a more assertive level of level for enhancement of trade, services, investment, and establishment of industry, small and medium enterprises, entrepreneurship, agriculture, blue economy, inter-regional tourism, etc. As a business entrepreneur, I firmly believe that this platform can effectively contribute to enhance trade and economic operation among the D8 countries. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, considering today's looming uncertainties in the global trade, I call upon all that is, it is appropriate time we demonstrate our commitment to implement the D8 Preferential Trade Agreement, D8 PTA. I believe that business people have a significant role to play. Therefore, I would request the business leaders to play a pivotal role in increasing business to business connectivity as well as business to government connectivity. The ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, in the coming days, we will face some challenges posed by some near innovation and realities like artificial intelligence, automation, Internet of Things, fourth industrial revolution, blockchain, blockchain tech, tech, Finnish tech innovations. We need, we need to keep allied ourselves with these challenges and transport this, these innovations into opportunities by exchanging technology and innovation among these countries. The leaders of the chambers of these countries can play the key roles in these regards. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates. As this, at this point, I would like to conclude by, by sharing with you some thoughts for enhancing D8 trade. The D8 Business Forum may organize more business dialogues, summits, workshops, seminars for exchanging ideas and views. The importers and exporters of this forum may be informed about such cooperation and exchange of information. We can work together to facilitate digital trade. This, the creation of digital platform may be considered tailoring to the local requirements where partnership with the private sector could be suitable for financing and having access to technical support. This forum should also chalk out programs for enhancing intra D8 investment, both inward and outward. In this connection, I would like to inform that Bangladesh has constructed 100 economic zones with user friendly rules and procedures to attract foreign direct investment. We are earnestly request investors from D8 countries to invest in our economic zone. The divergence of custom procedures and standards is always a concern for the business people. With a view, <clears throat> with a view of minimizing the problems related to custom D8 business from may give some policy inputs, suggestions, so that the D8 customs group may formulate rules commensurate with trade facilitations. Finally, let us find a mechanism how to how the best practices and lessons in the use of technologies in the advanced D8 countries could be shared with the other members for driving green, resilient business recovery. I thank you all for your attention. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangla. Thanks. Thank you, His Excellency.
Mr. Tipu Munshi MP, for your wonderful remarks. Now, I am honored to invite our chief guest, His Excellency Dr. A.K. Abdul Mumin MP, the Honorable Foreign Minister of the Government of Bangladesh, for his address. We are really fortunate to have you with us today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Muhammad Mahfudullah. Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Honorable Ministers, uh, Secretary General of D8, uh, President of FBCCI and TOB, Excellencies, all protocol observed, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. I am humbled to speak at this D8 Business Forum on the eve of the 10th D8 Summit. It is an important event when the chairmanship of the D8 Chamber of Commerce and Industries is being handed over to the Federation of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industries from the Union of Chambers and Commerce, Chambers and Commodity Exchanges of Turkey. Here, I would like to put an on record our special appreciation for Mr. Rifat Hisar uh, Dikli Lyo, the president of the talk. Since he took over the chair of the D8 CCI in 2007, he has relentlessly supported and promoted the D8 CCI. Thank you, Mr. Rifat Hisar uh, Dikli I hope I'm right. <laughs> I would also like to congratulate Mr. Sheikh Fazle Fahim, the president of FBCCI, for taking over the chairmanship of D8 CCI. I, sh I wish you all the success in taking this chamber to even newer heights. Ladies and gentlemen, in this special occasion, let me first pay my deepest homage to the memory and spirit of the greatest Bengali of all time, the father of the nation. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. It was his vision of Sunar Bangla, a prosperous Bangladesh, or the golden Bengal that we are aspiring to achieve. Following the legacy of Bangabandhu, his able daughter and our Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has put, put her, her policy priorities of achieving economic advancement without leaving anyone left behind. Inclusive development is at the forefront of our national plan. With implementing this strategy, Bangladesh moved out from the World Bank defined list of low income countries to lower middle income country in 2015. Now it is graduating from the UN list of least developed countries. This is a remarkable achievement for Bangladesh at a time when we, have, we are observing the 50th golden jubilee of our independence and the 100th anniversary of Father of the Nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman. This has been possible for pro-people and pro-business socioeconomic policies of Sheikh Hasina government. Bangladesh is now a vibrant economy, a land of opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, risks and uncertainty are the two key elements that any business must always be prepared for. While this is true, the current age of the fourth industrial revolution has already begun to transform traditional industrial structures in unprecedented ways. Thus, while the objectives of the business remain the same, the way to operate is changing fast. In terms of network, it is not sufficient just to be big business entity, but now it is also important to get engaged with many actors of different profiles and from different fields to ensure sustainable business. As businessmen, one cannot but accept the pressing need of enhanced connectivity and collaboration in this new reality to ensure safe and sustainable outputs and profit margins. In this regard, the statute of DHCCI calls for such cooperation among the member states to forging economic integration to ensure social development. Distinguished delegates, today's world is facing uncertainty in all aspects because of the COVID-19 global pandemic. The UN has estimated 
that the global economy is expected to lose nearly $8.5 trillion in output over the next two years. It is this unfortunate situation that has compelled us to hold this auspicious business forum virtually today. At the same time, it is on you, the leaders of business sector, who have a special responsibility and challenge to help the global economy turn around. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, through people-centric leadership of our Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Bangladesh has been able to balance between life and livelihood to a great extent during this pandemic. The government has adopted a series of stimulus packages worth of, uh, around 14.6 US, 14.6 billion US dollar, which is around 4.4 percent of GDP, with a view to protecting the income of the poor, the vulnerable, and helping the revival of economic activities. The stimulus package was timely and effective. Distinguished guests, the total GDP of B8 member states, around 4.9% of world GDP, and the total population of G8 countries is around 15.3% of world population. This is manifestation of the region's consumer base for both service and commodities along with its uh, inherent growth potentials. To tap into that, I believe D8 CCI could play the key role through effective collaboration and partnership with the government sector in addition to their own networking mechanism. Leveraging the com commonalities D8 member states should aim at promoting inter-trade and investment innovation. We need common investment policies, guidelines, and strategies, including diaspora investment opportunities and workforce minimizing, tariff and non-tariff barriers. We also need to create funds for development, R&D, technology transfer, capacity building, and support for institutions and centers of excellence, including the SME and blue economy sectors. We'd like to particularly stress on the area of innovation and mainstreaming them in our developmental strategy side. Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, finally, I would again like to express my appreciation to the new chair of D8 CCI and the Federation, uh, the Federation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, and also to the immediate past chair, the Union of Chambers and commodity exchanges of Turkey for their laudable arrangements. The Secretary General of the B8 Secretariat, of course, deserves special appreciation for his sincere efforts and significant contribution. I'd also like to render my sincerest gratitude to all the delegates from across B8 for joining this business forum, albeit uh, virtually, and thus manifesting your commitment to the development of not only your respective countries, but the D8 as a whole. This is the spirit that moves things in the right direction in a sustainable manner. I wish you a productive and joyous afternoon ahead. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabundu, long live D8 Corporation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Momen, MP, for your valuable words. With the address of the chief guest, the opening session has concluded. Now I am requesting Mr. Muhammad Muntaki Mashraf, Senior Vice President of FBCCI, to present the thanking remarks. Mr. Muntaki Mashraf. Thank you. His Excellency, Dr. Muhammad AKM Abdul Momen, MP, Honorable Foreign Minister of Bangladesh. His Excellency, Mr. Tipu Munshi, MP, Honorable Commerce Minister of Bangladesh. His Excellency, Mr. Roshid Roshna. Pixel, Honorable Trade Minister of Turkey, His Excellency MD Sharia Alam MP, Honorable State Minister of Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh, uh, Mr. His Excellency Mr. Zain uh, Samwa, uh, Honorable Vice Minister of Trade of Indonesia, His Excellency Ambassador Dato, who Zafar 
Ku Sar, mm, Secretary General D8. Mr. Sheikh Fazle Fahim, President of PCCI and newly elected Chairman of D8. Uh, Mr. Rifat Azria, President 12. Moderator, Mahfuzul Haq, uh, Chief Executive Officer of PCCI, estimated business leaders from D8 countries, my colleagues, uh, dear participant, media colleagues, Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and good afternoon from Bangladesh. I, on behalf of FBCCI, thank you all for participating at the D8 Business Forum organized by FBCCI, TOAB, and D8 CCI on the sideline of 10th D8 Summit, Dhaka 2021. First of all, I would like to congratulate Sheikh Fazle Fahim on behalf of the chairman of D8 Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And we believe and confident that how the way Sheikh Fazle Fahim has uh, played his role in a BCCI, CASI, SARC Chamber. So on D8 Chamber, and now he has taken the charge. So we believe that D8 Chamber will go in the next level on the leadership of Sheikh Fazle Fahim. We express our special thanks to His Excellency Dr. A.K. Abdul Momen, Honorable Foreign Minister of Bangladesh, to join as a chief guest. We also express thanks and gratitude. Respected special guest, Honorable Tipu Munshi, Honorable Commerce Minister of Bangladesh, Roshet Pikan, Honorable uh, Minister of Trade of Turkey, our sincere thanks to our honorable guest of honor, uh, Sharia Alam, State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bangladesh, Zain Sambua, uh, Honorable Vice Minister of Trade of Indonesia, Honorable Ambassador Dotu Zafar, Secretary General D8 to join with us. We're grateful to Tuab, Turkey, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bangladesh, D8 Secretary, Kandi, Indonesia, NCCIMA, Nigeria, FEDCOC, Egypt, NCCIM, Malaysia, ICCIMA, Iran, and FPCCI, Pakistan, for their cooperation in organizing the program. We we thank all again for your participant at D8 Business Forum. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Mahmoud Muntaki Mashraf, for your thanking remarks. Here we are closing the plenary session. We will start the breakout sessions in five minutes. And I request distinguished speakers and audiences to stay with us for the breakout sessions. And we are thankful to be joined by all of you today. Our first break, break, breakout session, we have theme titled Integration of Technology and Innovations Among the D8. I would now like to invite you all to the first breakout session one. And we have eight speakers with us today. And speakers from each country are expected to address on mutual cooperation among the eight countries in the areas of integration of science and technology, innovation and high-tech research in business and investment. Please note that each, each speaker will be speaking for five minutes. And due to time constraint, we are unable to take any questions from the audience during the discussion. I humbly request all speakers to adhere to their time limits. At the fourth minute of each speech, a bell will be rung to let you know about the time limit. And we request the audience joining by Zoom to keep their microphones muted at this time. When it's time to speak, you 
can unmute it. Our first speaker is Mr. Sheikh Fuzle Fahim, respected president of the Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Fuzle Fahim on the panel. Mr. Sheikh Fuzle Fahim. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Mr. Ibrahim Mahmoud Al Arabi, President, the Federation of Egyptian Chambers of Commerce. Mr. Tan Sri Datuk Ter Leong Yap, President, the National Chamber of Commerce of Industries of Malaysia. Mrs. Hadia Sarutu Ia Aliu, National President, Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce of Industries, Mines and Agriculture, Nasima. Mr. Nasir Hayat Magu, President, the Federation of Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FPCCI. Mr. Rifat Isar Jiklovolo, President, Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchanges of Turkey, TO. Mr. Shinta W. Kamdani, Vice Chairman of International Relations, Indonesian Chambers of Commerce and Industries, Kadin. Dr. Muhammad Reza Karbasi, Deputy President for International Affairs, Iranian Chambers of Commerce and Industries, Mines and Agriculture. Mr. Moderator, Muhammad Mahfuz Zul Haq, CEO of BCCI. Esteemed guests, media colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. Good morning and good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the bre breakout session one of D8 Business Forum titled Integration of Technology and Innovation among D8. Our D8 states future economic success, growth and competitiveness depend on a thriving and innovative technology sector. Data-driven innovation is the foundation of enterprises across D8 for days to come. Integration of technology and innovation are closely connected with the ongoing global transition towards digital economy. Many industries and sectors, including healthcare, banking, computing, retail, etc., worldwide have incurred a significant shift towards digitization by integrating technology in their operating method. Leveraging innovation across economic sectors in D8 countries can be the key driver for securing a strong foothold in the post-COVID world. Focusing on fintech, health tech, edutech, agri-tech, clean tech, biotech that are exponentially growing every year ought to be the main priority for both the policymakers, academia of D8, D8 countries to move towards achieving SDG. During COVID-19, Bangladesh saw an impressive technology adaptation and sustained the economic shock of COVID-19. It was possible because back in 2008, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's Digital Bangladesh Initiative was spearheaded by Honorable ICT advisor to HBM, Sajib Bajajzoy. Based on Digital Bangladesh, FBCCI launched FBCCI Taxi. Taxi is one vertical of FBCCI Impact 4.0, adapted by the current board of FBCCI to enable technology to strengthen businesses, MSMEs, startups, and large by leveraging innovations across economic sectors in Bangladesh to be part of global value chain, startup ecosystem, with indigenous synergies. FBCCI Taxi is aligned with national strategy and global trajectory from private sector led by Bangladesh's exclusive umbrella trade organization as a homage to birth centenary of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, 50th anniversary of independence of Bangladesh, and LDC graduation with five year transition period. It aims to integrate technology into Bangladesh's business process and strategize Bangladesh's quaternary economic sector as a strong supplement to our national strategy. With globally top rated knowledge partners in mul multiple verticals, including but not limited to deep skill development, with knowledge partnerships such as University of Toronto, Canada, Seneca College, Canada, in addition to aligned with global startup ecosystem of entrepreneurship training by Massachusetts Institute of Technology, SOLF, MIT, 
US and excluding Asia, Singapore. Additional global top-rated partners will join on impact-based goals of sustainability on a focused and targeted manner. FDCCA Tech C and the D8 Technology Transfer and Exchange Network, D8 TTEN, can work simultaneously to develop mutual cooperation among D8 countries in the areas of integrating science, technology, innovation, and high-tech research in enterprises and investments. As D8 member states are different at, le different at levels of development, they can complement one another and promote collaboration, converting local value chain arrangement into the global value chains. In closing, I'm thankful for guests, speakers, audiences, and welcome and look forward to an enlightened session. Thank you all. Thank you, respected president of FBCCI for your unique insights. Next, I will invite Mr. Ibrahim Mahmoud Al Arabi, President of the Federation of Egyptian Chambers of Commerce. I would like to request Mr. Al Arabi to deliver his valuable speech. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I'm Dr. Ala Aiz, I'm the Secretary General of the Federation. Engineer Ibrahim Al Arabi was called in the cabinet a few minutes ago. So I'll have the honor of delivering his speech. Excellencies, ministers, presidents, ambassadors, Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to be with you all today on behalf of our 5 million companies, members of the Federation of Egyptian Chambers, and tens of millions of African companies, member of the Union of African Chambers that I have the honor of chairing. First, I'd like to wish you all a happy Ramadan and to thank our dear brother, Rifat Beek, for his excellent leadership of our chamber and wish our dear brother, Sheikh, Fazel Fahim, the best of luck in his new presidency. And the D8 countries are not only close friends, but are all time partners. We also share several key sectors where we can complement each other and cooperate with technology exchanges. These sectors include the highly needed agriculture, food processing, metal industries, components, manufacturing, high tech and software development, maritime transport, energy, and technological cooperation, especially in innovation. And today we meet to build together solid bridges of partnership and friendship. And such business relations can be supported by our Islamic Development Bank, as well as a host of multilateral development financial institutions. Such relations that not only includes trade and investment, but education, training, technology transfer, as well as naturally cultural cooperation. And our co economic and technological cooperation is our main target for our meeting today to increase our trade, investment, technological exchanges, and a host of potential cooperation. We should work on increasing our trade mix and focus on value added products. And all the tech sectors, whether FinTech or its applications in e-commerce, health, education, and the list goes on. And let me touch upon what Egypt can offer. Egypt is not only a large market of 100 million consumers, but today is a market of 3.1 billion consumers through our free trade agreements with zero customs, covering today all of Africa, the Arab world, the European Union, EFTA, Mercosur, Turkey, and United States of America. Hence, third country cooperation is the way forwards for all of us, where companies from the eight countries can export components and technologies and use Egyptian companies for their final manufacturing with only 45% local content and enter all these markets without customs while also reducing freight costs in a win-win format. That is besides software development and Arabization as well as using Egypt as a logistic hub for easy access to these markets. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, if you come and visit the Cairo Museum, you'll see that almost all tools and technologies that we're using today has been developed 6,000 years ago by our ancient grandparents. Today, it's our role together to upgrade and develop and modernize these technologies. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we all see the potential is high and now we have to walk the talk and start actions to benefit from all these opportunities. 
thank you all and looking forward to materializing our cooperation and walking the talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ibrahim Mahmoud Al Arabi for your eloquent speech. Now I am introducing Mrs. Shinta Kamdani, the Vice Chairman for International Relations of Indonesian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Kadin, to share her knowledge with us. Mrs. Shinta Kamdani. Thank you. Good afternoon from Jakarta. My colleague from uh, Chamber of Commerce in Bangladesh, Egypt, <clears throat> Iran, Malaysia, Nigeria, Pakistan, and of course, Turkey. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to address this important forum for business in developing eight countries. I'm looking forward to discussing and sharing experiences from Indonesia point of view on the cooperation and integration in research and innovation. Integration of technology and innovation among the D8 are something new to explore for innovation businesses simply because developing countries tend to be niche importers of science, technology, and innovation. In fact, in Indonesia's 2020 National Balance of Payment in fourth quarter 2020, recorded a 3.1 US dollar, uh, billion US dollar deficit in services trade due to import in technology products, primarily in the telecommunication and IT infrastructure, as well as the financial sector. While our important services trade revenue from tourism severely in contraction due to pandemic, to top it all, the diverging level of education and economic interests among the V8 countries would create a huge spectrum of technology and innovation cooperation that we need to reassess if we have the common interest and the resources for the executing it in fruitful real business activities among the V8. However, Cooperation in technology and innovation is by no means impossible. The D8 just needs to be realistic on what we can cooperate on science, technology, and innovation that may imply, um, amplify, sorry, amplify the business interaction among the D8, primarily in the light of recovery from the pandemic. From Indonesia, I would like to propose several sectors which may be found prospective to be cooperated on with D8 economies. First, on agriculture and agriculture technology. I think the agriculture sector can be said as Indonesia rising star in terms of export. While other exports from Indonesia are in severe contraction due to pandemic, Indonesia export in agriculture increased by 16.6% by December 2020. Needless to say, agriculture is a big part of Indonesian economy and power and for our economic recovery. As part of it is thanks to Indonesian government big attention on research and innovation in increase the country's productivity for agriculture products, especially rice and corn as our staple food crops. R&D agriculture is sponsored by the government in order to generate high quality seeds that are resistant to harsh weather condition or require less pesticide and fertilizers. Farmers are being introduced and educated on planting new varieties of crops that require less water or can be alternative crop in times of drought or changing season. These two are part of the government-led initiative in achieving national, national food security as mapped out in the National Medium-Term Development Plans 2020-2024. On the business side, export-oriented agriculture is flourishing primarily in plantation of palm oil, coffee tea, cocoa, and tropical foods. Due to more stringent standards on SPS, in agriculture export, Indonesia business also lean to adopt various technologies to increase productivity, reduce hazardous contaminants in our agriculture yield, as well as reducing greenhouse gas emission in plantation through adaptation of the methane capture technology. In addition, solutions also come from booming startup culture in Indonesia that is centered around technology innovation. For example, farmers can use emerging digital platform to connect directly with the buyers of their agriculture product, which increases the efficiency in the local food chain. Technology innovation 
in agriculture can also incorporate cost industry application. For example, drone technology that is used for surveillance and land mapping or drone spray, sprayer, pesticide and liquid fertilizers application. I think with this example, we see uh, many opportunities for the eight member countries to collaborate with uh, businesses on our side. Fisheries and agriculture. We also see opportunities in technology and innovation cooperation in fishery and agriculture. I think increasing fishery output for national food security, employment creation, and export purposes is also part of the Indonesian uh, National Medium Term Development Plan 2020-2024. Cooperation in aquaculture is particularly the most promising to be cooperated on among the decade with Indonesia given that it has a more positive outlook and with higher valuation compared to wild cow, wild cow fisheries. For Indonesia alone, it is estimated that Indonesia aquaculture is valued for more than 210 billion US dollars. And cooperation in aquaculture technology also has other potentials such as prevention of overfishing and IUU fishing. It can also be developed on landlocked countries without huge supply of water or access to sea. Our aircraft projects in manufacturing in Indonesia, most advanced technology and innovation will be in aerospace product manufacturing in which Indonesia also produce and export parts and components for global aircraft manufacturers. Indonesia has been recognized as the only country in Southeast Asia with complex aircraft manufacturing capability, including different types of aircraft and helicopter transport aircraft or civil airlines, as well as military planes. As Indonesia aircraft manufacturing is, is done by our state-owned enterprises, it will be easier for the DA to forge the cooperation simply with the support of government political will and resources. Third, the digital services, especially in healthcare. This pandemic disruption also forced us to take challenge and embrace digitization on many aspects of our business, especially in healthcare services. The healthcare service has also so, uh, shown very steady growth in the last three years, especially because of the pandemic. The strain of the pandemic has led to a surge in more leveraging telemedicine services. And um, we have a platform, for example, such as Halodoc, seeing 7.9 million users assessing its COVID-19 special features since March. Um, obviously, digital services growth is not limited in only um, the healthcare sector, among others, we can see that education training or capacity building are not being reimagined to be digital and the access is less constrained by the location. I think digitalization has opened many opportunities for us to cooperate better amidst the steady adoption of informa information technologies. <clears throat> we, this can also be very useful on, uh, within the D8 countries being agile toward changes and innovation. So we can also identify the risk early as well as establishing best practices of the business. Um, data protection and cybersecurity, as mentioned, pandemic also uh, over the world embraced digitalization. I think it is common interest among the D8 businesses to cooperate on improving cross-border cybersecurity cooperation to protect their own business, their customer, and their data from growing cybersecurity threats. So if the D8 is about integrating technology and innovation, I think cybersecurity awareness and appropriate training for setting up security against cybercrime will be a must. This is with regard also the D8 leader provide rulings or protocol of our cross-border exchange of data, data security, best practices on data security management, and basic joint training, which can help to manage cyber attacks and mitigate such risks for business. Lastly, integration of technology and innovation will be completely impossible without the skilled power of manpower, primarily when we have great potential to operate and general lack of skilled worker equipped with the appropriate technological knowledge in the respective fields of cooperation. Needless to say, the D8 needs to generate more talent with technology and innovation. We can cooperate on this in the context of education exchanges for workers upskilling and retraining. However, I think it will be proven to be quickly beneficial for overall member countries if we first facilitate the movement of skilled lab uh, labor and professionals among the D8 countries as well. In conclusion, Indonesia perceived a wide range of prospects from cooperation in technology and innovation for D8. However, I figure that 
all of these proposed areas of cooperation will be of common interest of all the eight countries, as well as the need to be mindful and realistic of the resources. I'll be happy to entertain any further discussion in this summit to explore how we can materialize the potential into real cooperation and real business activities with the DA. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Shintamdani, for your elaboration of potential areas of cooperation and collaboration between the D8 countries. Thank you so much. Now I would like to request Dr. Mohammad Reza Karbashi, Deputy President of Foreign International Affairs, Iran Chamber of Commerce, Industries, Mines and Agriculture, for his speech. Dr. Mohammad Reza Karbashi. Thank you very much, uh, His Excellency Sheikh Fahim, the Honorable President of uh, FPCCI, His Excellency Hisashi Kiluoglu, uh, the President of South, Excellencies, the representatives of all the national chambers of the eight countries, distinguished participants, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm very pleased to be with you today. I sincerely hope that this, web, this webinar contribute to the development of trade and economic ties, opening a new chapter in interaction among business and leader and industry leaders from the eight countries. I would like to appreciate the efforts of the president of TAP over the past two years and the good efforts made by Mr. Hisachi Kluoklu and his colleagues during their chairmanship. Also, while congratulating His Excellency Mr. Sheikh Fahim, the President of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce, for chairing the current term, I hope that during this period, we will see a significant increase in the volume of economic cooperation and collaborations between the private sectors of the eight member countries. I hope that the governments of D8 countries adopt policies that provide more space for the private sector by creating an atmosphere of trust in the private sectors and supporting them by providing all sorts of facilities for their cooperation. D8 member states hold 2% of the world's total natural reserves and 21% of the total global probed natural gas reserves. There is ample scope for cooperation among the eight member states in areas such as trade, industry, banking, insurance, science and technology, energy, tourism, and etc. The D8 organization has great capabilities to advance the collective interests of its members and can play an effective role in the global economic structure. As a, mat as a member of the D8 organization, Iran has achieved important cultural, social, and economic tasks in the recent years. Iran current currently ranks fourth in nanotechnology worldwide exporting its high-tech products to around 50 countries around the world. In addition, Iran is among the five Asian nations in the field of biotechnology. During the recent years, the knowledge-based economy in Iran has been one of the main branches of the agenda of the country's industrial sector. Iran's economy is moving towards a knowledge-based economy. It is worth mentioning that Iran ranks first in the region in high-speed internet access. Iran, with 52,000 scientific articles in the field of, field of information technology during the last 20 years, has the first rank in the region. Iran ranks first in the field of information technology in the region. Iranian youth in different years have achieved the top rank of computer Olympiad in the world. Information technology is among the top academic talents. 
more than 1,200 knowledge-based companies are active in the field of information and communication technology. Iran is unique in the region in terms of technology parks, exporting knowledge-based products in the field of information technology. We are one of the 10 most powerful countries in the world in designing, building, and launching satellites. Iran ranks first in the region in the development of smart business with more than 4,000 startups exposed to information technology. 40 Iranian knowledge-based parks lots belong to the field of information technology. This kind of facilities are with all, all the eight member countries. Rich natural resources and the ability to provide a wide range of techno-engineering services in various fields in the context of political stability and security and a highly skilled and young workforce have provided Iran with the opportunity to redefine its relations with the other D8 member states in a rational and dynamic form. Ladies and gentlemen, Unfortunately, political hostilities and economic sanctions have disrupted global economy, severely undermining multilateral cooperation. Therefore, economic multilateralism needs to be developed within frameworks such as D8 group. Also, with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, Iran's economy, like other Asian countries and the world, face a recession. Decreased sales and disruption of the production process are among the most important problems that occurred following the COVID-19 pandemic in Iran and other D8 countries. Therefore, it is necessary that the government of the member states try to rebuild the economic problems by taking the necessary measures to protect the private sector of their nations. Dear friends and colleagues, I would like to make a few suggestions on behalf of Iran Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines, and Agriculture as a D8 member states. First, establishing a committee for, for the examining of joint investment projects among member states and creating multinational companies at the regional level to attract more foreign investment, integrate developing countries in the global economy, and pursue the organization's economic goals. Second, creating a direct banking cooperation channel to reduce banking tra transaction difficulties as has already been provided by His Excellency, the Secretary General of the Act. Third, Getting technical and technological support from the UNCTAD to overcome the challenges associated with the non-competitive nature of developing economies, particularly in the, in the area of supply, trade, and maritime transport infrastructure. And fourth, facilitating procedures for issuing visas for business people from member states to enhance inter-regional inter trade ties. Finally, I hope that close cooperation among the eight member states can, to, can, can contribute to the growth and development of each and every member states. Thank you and hope the session, uh, the success of the business forum. I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Reza Karbasi to enlighten us with your deep thoughts and suggestions for joint investment, technological cooperation, and facilitating the trade and investment. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Mr. Tan Sri Datu Tar Leong Yap, the President, National Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Malaysia. Please join me in warm, warmly welcoming Mr. Tan Sri Datu Tarleong Yap for his speech. Thank you very much. President Sheikh Fazli Fahim, distinguished guests, 
Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for having me to speak at today's forum on the topic integration of technology and innovation among D8 countries at today's D8 Business Forum. Science, Technology and Innovation, SDI, forms an integral part of economic development and structural uh, transformation. It helps to expand a country's productive capacity and productivity through technological advancement and enhances business competitiveness to benefit the most from international trade and investment and creates high skilled jobs. The COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated and utilization, the utilization and coordination of SDI system to fight the COVID-19 pandemic in our own country as well as regionally. National capacities for innovation need to be strengthened to utilize STI based application and solutions to help tracking the virus transmission path, managing critical supplies and developing digital platforms for health. Governments in D8 and Asia have utilized technology tools to combat the virus spread. The Islamic Republic of Iran's strong innovation capacity in the health and biotech sectors has supported an effective pandemic response. And in Malaysia, a mobile app called My Sujatra has been launched for citizens to carry out health self-assessments, provide information guide about the virus transmission path and for the tracing and vaccination registration exercise. And in Southeast Asia, China leveraged on its advanced technology capacity, especially the artificial intelligence, AI, while Thailand uses ninja robot machines to facilitate communications between doctors and coronavirus patients through video chat functions to reduce the risk of infection. Allow me to briefly share Malaysia's STI development status. Malaysia's national policy on science, technology and innovation for the period of 2021 to 2030 is aimed to integrate STI and economy to drive high quality growth and competitive as well as achieve economic prosperity. Although Malaysia has been a rise in gross expenditure in R&D per gross domestic product from 0.5% in 2000 to 1.13% in 2012, it is still far from achieving its, our desired GDP of 2% by 2020. Malaysia, is still, Malaysia still needs to enhance and strengthen our innovation capacity and capability, even though our rank of the Global Innovation Index has improved from 35th uh, in 2019 to 33rd in 2020. Malaysia's export of high technology product had grown by 7.6% per annum to USD 86.6 billion in 2019 from USD 64.4 billion in 2015 accounted for 51.8% of Malaysia's manufacturing exports. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to outline a few issues and approaches to forge collaboration and mutual cooperation in the integration of STI among our D8 countries. First, a country's STI stakeholders must have a clear understanding of the key strengths and weaknesses of their innovation systems and identify strategy priorities for, the, for our development. The challenges encountered are limited government's budget, low R&D expenditure, inadequate technical manpower, lack of financing. Towards this end, a technical cooperation and exchange program in the field of STI with the support of United Nations Conference on Trade and Development to share best practices of STI system among D8 partners. And second, the government of D8 countries can collaborate with the World Bank to undertake supporting innovation and entrepreneurship projects through providing lending, advisory, and technical support services. The World Bank can consider to provide matching grants to facilitate development of new products through collaboration between firms and R&D institutions of D8 countries. And the third, Establish a D8 STI development framework to share knowledge on research developments and science and technology in various areas of cooperation. 
among others, to promote industrial research and transfer of technology, acquisition, adaptation, and development of modern technology, and disseminate and exchange industrial and technological information. In addition, establish a partnership between public and private academic and research institutions of development partners, which aims to facilitate cooperation among member states in SDI projects, including technical knowledge and technological transfer. Fourth, establish the Industrial Science and Technology Working Group to broaden partnerships in innovation policy development and to intensify cooperation among governments, businesses, and academia. The design and implementation of effective SDI ecosystem and foundations requires a sound understanding of capabilities of the country's SDI stakeholders, their interactions, and also set of incentives and disincentives that they face. We business groups and chambers of commerce of the eight countries should build cooperation or cooperative network and identify science, technology, and innovation opportunities, as well as to intensify SDI cooperation between both public and private sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end my short talk by sharing a quote on innovation by the late Steve Jobs. Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tan Sri Datuk Tarleang, to share your significant observation about the work forming working group, FDI, artificial intelligence, and reduce the infection rate of coronavirus and taking the joint projects with the help of uh, World Bank and industrial research and innovation, etc. Thank you so much. Now I would like to welcome Mrs. Hazia Saratu Ya Aliu, National President, Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Mines and Agriculture, to share her wise opinion with our audience. Thank you for having me, Mr. Moderator, the distinguished presidents of the D8 Chambers of Commerce, participants. I say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of the Council and members of the Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industries, Mines, and Agriculture, NACIMA, I bring a greeting of uh, a message of goodwill to all members of the DH Chambers of Commerce here present at this webinar or a virtual uh, business summit organized by the Federation of Bangladeshi Chambers of Commerce and Industry on the sideline of the 10th DH Summit 2021. I congratulate the leadership of the uh, Federation of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce, led by Sheikh Faisal Fahim on its assumption of the role as of the president of the D8 Chambers of Commerce. I firmly believe that under the FBCCI, the D8 Chambers of Commerce and Industry will consolidate, consolidate and expand the gains made under the immediate past administration of the Union of Chambers of Commerce and Commodity Exchanges of Turkey, COBB, especially in areas that support cooperation among the business sec sectors of our countries while developing industrial and agricultural production and promoting joint uh, research and development. However, it goes without saying that a new leadership of DHCCI faces a fundamental, uh, formidable task given the current global trends brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic of the year 2020. The pandemic is the most significant global disruption since the World War II or uh, World War and the first truly global public health crisis in the modern era. Entire industries 
have ground to a halt. International travels has receded to its lowest level in 75 years. Nearly all of the world's leading economic economies are in recession. And currently, more than 1 million people have died from the uh, virus and its complications. As we all are aware, the pandemic has forced profound changes in all aspects of society, with technology playing a major role in enabling the private sector to respond to the disruption. This is why I highly recommend or commend the topic of choice of this breakout session, integration of technology and innovation among D8 member countries, as it has provided an opportunity to learn how other developing countries have managed the health, social and economic challenges they face through innovative thinking and application of technology. In Nigeria in particular, the trend of innovation in the recent times has focused on non-technological innovation, such as marketing or organizational innovation, rather than technological innovation, which is innovation for the purpose of introducing new goods, services, and processes. This innovation landscape in Nigeria is in stark contrast with the more developed countries where the focus is on technological innovation. Recent studies into the issue have confirmed that innovation stems from the availability of real time and accurate data and information. However, funding and infrastructure have been the most uh, glaring obstacles to the private sector's innovation efforts. In the face of these challenges, one would expect that firms would interact more closely with technology sources, such as universities and research centers, as well as funding sources such as government agencies. However, vertical linkages with customers and suppliers and horizontal linkages with com uh, competitors have turned out to be more important to firms. To this end, the Nigerian Association of Chamber of Commerce, Industries, Mines and Agriculture, NASIMA, has focused on the application of technology towards gathering data for market access as part of the private sector's support for the uh, Nigerian national digital economy policy and strategy 2020 to 2030, which is built on the pillars of developmental regulations, digital literacy and skills, solid infrastructure, service infrastructure, digital, digital services development, and promotions, soft, inf uh, soft infrastructure, digital society and emerging technologies and indigenous content development and adoption. The Nasima Marketplace, the Nasima Marketplace platform collects data on current stock production capacities of the Nigerian private sector coordinates the flow of investment and other sources of funding and promotes the production capacity of the private sector while strengthening the value chains and providing market access. In my firm belief, or it is my firm belief that such interventions can promote mutual cooperation among D8 countries in the areas of, of integration of science, technology, innovation, and high-tech research in business and invent, investment. And I look forward to the discussions of this business summit to establish opportunities in trade relations, 
enhance participation in decision making at the international level and provide better standards of living in our various countries. In conclusion, please accept my assurance that the Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Nasima, remains an avid promoter of all activities of the DHCCI towards promoting the private sector's role in the process of socioeconomic development. I thank you all for listening to Thank you, Mrs. Hazia Saratu Ya Aliu, for the enlightening speech. You rightly mentioned, pointed out the importance of integration of technology and innovation and innovative th thinking, also indigenous technology, application of technology and digital literacy, etc. Thank you so much. Welcome. Now I am welcoming our next speaker. Mr. Nasser Hayat Magu, President of the Federation of Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industry, to deliver his speech. Mr. Nasser Hayat Magu. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Excellencies, Ministers, Presidents of D8, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great honor and pleasure for me to address D8 Business Forum organized by Federation of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry in partnership with DHCCI. At the outset, I would like to congratulate Mr. Sheikh Fazal Fahim, President of Federation of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry, for assuming the charge of pres presidency of D8 Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I would like also to appreciate Mr. Rifat Hari Chivoglu, President of for his outstanding services for enhancing trade activities among the D8 member countries. Intra-regional trade among D8 countries is still 4.5% of total trade, which is less than available potential that all countries have diverse resources and export baskets like Malaysia's export consists of high technological goods, Turkey exports automobile and machinery, Iran, Nigeria and Egypt export depend on natural gas, coal, mineral fuel, Pakistan and Bangladesh export comprises of textile, etc. D8 countries have, mo have more trade supplementary product basket than of the complementary item. It means D8 countries can eliminate tariff and non-tariff barriers. Intra-D8 trade will be increased and member countries could partner each in each other's development. The halal industry is rapidly growing industry all over the world and estimated trade is more than three trillion dollars. The rise in consumption of halal product has created a big market for D8 in the world because of safety, hygiene and ethical quality. At present, Malaysia is leading global hub of halal certified products and can support or assist the D other D8 countries for developing the halal industry. Halal tourism has flourished in recent years, particularly in Malaysia, Turkey, Egypt, etc. to cater for the needs of Muslim travelers who want to enjoy full holiday services while at the same time address their religious requirement as well as Islamic customs and culture. Eight countries should join in developing halal. Halal tourism has flourished in recent years, particularly in Malaysia, Turkey, etc., to cater for the needs of Muslim travelers who want to enjoy full holiday services while at the same time address their religious requirement as well as Islamic customs and culture. D8 countries should join hands for developing halal tourism in the other D8 countries. Current structure of visa among D8 countries are hindering the free movement of persons Across, across the D8 organization, despite the fact that member countries except Malaysia signed the simplification pro procedure for businessmen of D8 countries in 2001, and Malaysia signed this agreement in 2008. We will also pursue our government to sign this agreement as soon as possible. Important, uh, uh, important thing in Pakistan is Belt and Road initiative that provides an important opportunity for D8 countries to develop infrastructure and to be integrated into global value chain. 
in bri china pakistan economic corridor and china indonesia economic corridors provide huge opportunities to d8 member countries to make investment along the corridors and expand their trade and economic activities towards central asia and east asian countries pakistan plays a critical role in economic growth and development of d8 bloc pakistan is enjoying significant and cordial relations with all d8 member countries in trade economy tourism communication transportation and agriculture among d8 bloc pakistan has reached preferential trade agreement with malaysia iran and indonesia the volume of trade between d8 countries stands 6.2 billion Pakistan is very keen to enhance trade and economic relations with D8 countries. The potential area of investment in Pakistan are energy, mining, infrastructure, automobile, telecommunications, value-added textiles, leather, banking, and banking, finance, and engineering. In the end, I would like to reaffirm that we always strongly favor the economic liberalization process in the da region and strongly support its people and wish for its sustainable progress and prosperity thank you thank you mr nasser hayat magu to share your views you mentioned about the signing of agreement of between, between the mutual cooperation between the da countries and partnering and also mentioned about the development of infrastructure to develop the global value chain and incentives you also mentioned about the different incentives given by the pakistan to d8 countries thank you so much now i would like to request mr rifat pizarji kluulu president union of chambers and commodity exchange of turkey thank you my brother uh dear ladies and gentlemen despite so many negative impacts covid accelerated automation and digitalization across the world we are all think that the economy of the future will be digital and related sectors are the biggest winners so countries must enable a plant transition by investing in digital infrastructure such as e-commerce e-learning or e-government at the same same time such investments must also include support of for workers due to the transition from shrinking to expand expanding sectors increased investments in training recycling and high quality education will be pivotal to unlocking the potential of the digital economy more broadly a more fundamental rethink of how to adapt labor market policies to respond to accelerating automation and to facilitate digital transformations may be needed this is an ambitious agenda but transition is a must digital commerce is an essential part of this digital transformation first we moved a world where goods cross borders to a world where factories cross borders now we are moving into a new world where data goes beyond borders in this new era digital commerce will be dominant additionally international trade is increasingly digitalized being out of digital commerce will mean staying out of the global economy and here comes the question is the aid ready to seize these new opportunities there is a trade restrictiveness index report covering 65 countries worldwide you can reach it on the internet so i will not go to, into details details the report includes five countries from the eight indonesia pakistan malaysia nigeria and turkey unfortunately it comes to digital trade barriers we are at the top of the list some of the countries 
with the least barriers are New Zealand, Norway, Ireland, Hong Kong, post financial and regulatory burdens and costs. What we need to do is review the national regulations in our countries and ensure the establishment of an ecosystem that is suitable for digital commerce and encourage entrepreneurs. The European Union has begun to take steps in this regard. They started to prepare a digital single market strategy, just as the old European single market means the free movement of the goods, capital, services, and employees. There are new creating a digital single market that includes the free movement of all this as well as data. In line with the growth of and employment agenda of our post virus recovery period, if you want our SMEs to reach wider global markets easily, young people find jobs quickly and our nations get rich. It is of great importance that we are aware of these digital trade barriers and then remove them. Technological and financial cooperation and policy coordination among the eight countries are needed to prepare our nations for the post-COVID era. We should urgently develop our much for listening to me. Thank you very much, Mr. Rifat Hizar-Zikliolu, the President of Union Chambers of Commodity Exchanges of Turkey. Thank you very much for your enlightenment about the international trade. You mentioned the existing trade barriers, SMEs and technology and financial cooperation. Thank you so much. I'm sure this is the end of this, almost end of the breakout session one. I'm sure the audience found this breakout session unique and captivating. To have such dynamic and talented business leaders share their unique perspectives and brilliant insights with us it certainly made today's forum a success. Now we are going to start the breakout session. I'm requesting Dr. Syed Farhat Anwar, Professor and Director Institute of Business Administration, University of Dhaka to moderate breakout session two and three. Dr. Syed Farhat Anwar, Professor and Director, Institute of Business Administration, University of Dhaka. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nafuz. Uh, I got disconnected for a minute, I guess. Uh, thank you so much. Can everyone hear me? Am I audible? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, let me start this uh, session, which is um, extremely relevant. And of course, at the same time, um, we also have to understand that when we talk in terms of in the eight uh, in particular, we're talking about a group of countries uh, which were leading the world, even in the fifth and the sixth century, 515, uh, uh, in fact, uh, even 500 years ago, they were the leading economy in this region. So that is the type of countries that we're talking about. And this area that we're talking about is extremely important because we are not only talking about um, the youth or the future citizens of this country, the leaders of this country, but even more importantly, the inclusive growth, which can only be. Can I just uh, keep silent for a minute because of the other piece? And then we start.
Sir, your microphone is muted. Sir, your microphone is muted. Please unmute the microphone. Please unmute your microphone, sir. I don't know. I was keeping muted because of the azan, I said. So that was the reason it was muted. Anyways, I can uh, restart. Um, thank you so much for bearing with me. I have kept it muted because of the Azan. Uh, let me again restart. Um, first of all, again, thank you for giving me the floor, Mr. Mazda uh, giving me the opportunity to be here today. Um, Assalamu alaikum to all of you and a very good afternoon. Today's uh, discussion is extremely relevant. Firstly, for the fact that we are part of a region which was actually a leading economy back 500 years ago. And the trade was open. Knowledge exchange was open. And that is where, and that was the reason why we were leading the world. Today, when we have closed our doors, we have actually gone backwards. D8 becomes relevant for all of us in this particular respect. Talking about today's sort of topic, that is also relevant because of the fact that we're talking about number one, of course, the future citizens of these countries who will be taking the lead role, the leaders of the country in particular. And that too, we are talking in terms of inclusive growth. And without inclusive growth, there's absolutely no reason why we can have innovation. Innovations actually start at that particular level. And that is why the startup ecosystem needs to be designed properly. Moreover, we also have to understand that if you talk about, our, about the future agenda of the world, the future agenda, particularly with regard to the fifth uh, industrial revolution, is actually talking about humanistic revolution. This humanistic revolution is the only way through which we can attain what is called inclusive growth. So this is the paradigm based on which this particular discussion or this breakout session should be focusing on. We have four panel members today, now four panel members who have been contributing in this sector for quite some time. Uh, unfortunately for time constraint, we'll be giving five minutes each uh, to each of our panel members. I'll start off and I will request all of our members to focus on their country and also to focus on how we can link with all the DA nations. That should be the focus. And we also may bring in our own exclusivity, uh, which can develop inclusivity in the region by itself. Our first speaker today is Ms. Sonia Bashir Kabir. She's an advisor to the Federation of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and is also the founder of SBK Tech Ventures and SBK Foundation. So my first speaker, may I welcome our first speaker, and please Ms. Sonia Bashir, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Farad Anwar. Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear you. Thank you. In the interest of time, I will just dive into the content. Um, Honorable President, Mr. Fahim, distinguished guests, 
speakers and participants, a very good day to you all. Um, just a little bit of a preamble about Bangladesh, which you already know, but it kind of builds up to our story, that with a land size of approximately 58,000 square miles and a population of 160 million people, Bangladesh has reached over 30% urbanization. Connectivity has reached its peak with 98% mobile phone connection, that's 161 million people, 62% in internet penetration, that's 102 million people, and 57% mobile internet penetration, that's 94 million. The country has a young population with a median age of 28 years and 62% of the population below the age of 35, which means that besides demographic dividend, the density dividend, 160 million living in 58,000 square miles, we also have data dividend, and data, as we know from our past panel, uh, is the new currency. I'd like to divide uh, my topic into two areas. So first, a little bit of a focus on the micro and smaller cottage entrepreneurs of Bangladesh, and then we will delve into the startup ecosystem, youth being a pivotal area in both uh, sectors. So the MSMEs play a very pivotal role in Bangladesh's economy by generating almost 25% of GDP and half of the total employment in the country. There are 7.8 million business entities in Bangladesh, among which 88% are recognized as micro and cottage small enterprises, which constitute nearly 75% of the non-agricultural employment. Uh, the point to be made here is that the MSEs, MSMEs borrowing from the microfinance institutions uh, is increasing, and the top microfinance institutions have as high as 40% of loan portfolio invested in the MSMEs, which, which shows about the rising demand of borrowing and lending and the economy growth. And given the growth of this, we need to focus on financial literacy skills to drive financial inclusion because clearly there is a need. As Bangladesh braces itself towards a mobile first, mobile only, virtual only economy, the country could not have been better prepared to embrace a thriving startup ecosystem with strong government support and local institutional investors as we currently have. Bangladesh's rapidly growing economy is driving mobile consumption with a growing appetite for consumer spending. This middle and affluent class population is young, tech savvy and optimistic about their future, leading them to spend on lifestyle services. Currently, there are 1,000 plus active startups in Bangladesh and approximately 200 are emerging every year. FinTech, ride sharing and logistics are popular growth sectors. The uh, participation and collaboration that can happen among the D8 countries would an area would be in the MSME with the financial inclusion and the financial skills literacy taking it forward, including women. And secondly, on the startups in emerging countries, um, just for uh, other facts, Asia now has 42% or 262 out of the 615 unicorns over the world. A unicorn is a startup that is valued over a billion dollars. And the market valuation of unicorns from our developing region stands at $960 billion. We all know that the startup with the technology focus are going to be driving the next employment rates and solving the problems with our SDG driven, impact driven, and the enterprise and social government governance driven ESG. The global funding for startup is also rising. We've seen a record investment of $21.5 billion for mature stage economies and 30% increase in the Asia Pacific countries in five years. So with all of that, I think we have a very, um, optimistic platform that we could build among the eight countries with and the ecosystem building projects of Bangladesh collaborating. COVID-19 has brought about an accelerated digital transformation globally, especially in countries like ours, which technology was at a nascent stage. As a result, collaboration may be easier now than better. With the dominance of our combined population, leveraging technology and the thriving startup ecosystem, together we can bet on higher economic growth. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sonia Mashir, for giving us a perspective of Bangladesh and where one can actually uh, collaborate. Uh, I'm sure that our rest of the eight nations will be looking at it and we should be able to collaborate even further. Our second speaker today is Dr. Afshin Kolahi, uh, President of Knowledge Based Business Commission in Iran, Chamber of Commerce industries, mines, and agriculture. Uh, let us all be aware of the fact that, as we are aware of the fact that 
Iran has been leading in particularly not just technology, but also in the SME and inclusivity uh, agenda. So let us now hear from Ms. Afshin, uh, Dr. Afshin Kolai. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for the time that you gave me, and good afternoon, Tehran time. Uh, I want to talk about opportunities as supporting programs in Iran for high-tech and startup enterprises. Uh, that in Iran we call them knowledge-based companies because we support them by law. We have a knowledge based companies. Uh, they receive uh, support by government. They have been audited and licensed. Uh, they are in biotechnology, agriculture and food industry, medical drugs and diagnosis and treatment products, advanced materials and chemical technologies, advanced machinery, medical supplies and equipment, electrical and electronics and telecommunication systems and ICT uh, products and services. The ecosystem in Iran consists of Vice Presidency for Science and Technology, Iran National Innovation Fund with around 1 billion uh, funds, uh, Ministry of ICT and Ministry of Industry. We have technical parks, and also in private sector, Tehran Chamber of Commerce and Iran Chamber of Commerce and Industry, they support these companies. And uh, as you see, high tech, semi high tech startups, ICTs, innovation centers, accelerators, venture capital, and other tech companies are in our ecosystem. There are many supporting programs in Iran for these companies by law. We have a special law for knowledge-based companies, and they support. Uh, they receive support from government, uh, cash flow, and other facilities for them. And also, as I said, the national fund for them for loans and other things. And uh, Iran Chamber of Commerce also have programs for supporting startups. We have an innovation center in all uh, chambers around the country and there are some supporting programs by ministry of ict and also ministry of, ministry of industry have some supporting programs for events exhibitions uh, delegations and also export guarantee fund for uh, exports that have been done by the companies we can be uh, your help as an export networking window. Uh, if you like to buy product, products and uh, services from these companies, we can identify them and we can receive the support to help you and them uh, to be more beneficial for both sides and also we will bring them to your market. Also, if you want to be partnered with them and receive the support by your partnership program, we can find you the potential partner and also do all the uh, helps, receive all the helps from you and your partner here to receive a mutual beneficial cooperation. Things that we can do at present with all the uh, all your good companies are, and countries are establishing innovation and tech trade centers in your countries. We have uh, funds for this from government. Also, we can develop production lines under local brands in your companies by technology transfer from Iran. And also, we can be able to have or we can have a joint a technical funds and venture capital to support uh, any partnership that we can reach between companies 
in Iran and other companies in DA. Thank you again many times uh, to all and you can reach us. Please be in contact with us. Thank you again. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Austin. I think it's a brilliant idea when you're talking about uh, particularly creating joint brands and also undertaking joint collaboration, particularly in terms of innovation and research, because when we talk in terms of smaller firms, that is the only way out. And that is the way we can work together uh, also to bring up certain areas. And having that cultural sort of linkages uh, building brand would not be a problem. In fact, that is an excellent idea. May I now move to our speaker, third speaker, Mr. Alex M. Horn, uh, CEO of Digital Night in Malaysia. Mr. Horn, the floor is yours now. Thank you, Dr. Sheikh. Your, your Excellencies, uh, President Sheikh Pasli Fahim, congratulations, distinguished presidents, translator, ladies and gentlemen, warm greetings from Cyberjaya the multimedia Super corridor in Malaysia. Uh, today's sharing session is about a topic uh, that we feel very passionate about, is how we engage our youth going forward. And uh, it's titled Connected Youth, Recipe for Quality Growth. And there's only three slides to this, by the way. Uh, the idea of Connected Youth, uh, it actually comes from the large organization best practice. Large organization, despite the large numbers of uh, staff, they still set personal development targets and track their training throughout their whole career. This is the education process that they did well. And for large organizations, they set up innovative forums to connect talents from different parts of the business in different locations to come up with new ideas and or create some business advantage. This is the entre uh, uh, entrepreneurship process within an organization. And the internal employment opportunities for a large organization is always published online. It's very transparent, it's open to all qualified internet candidates to apply. This is inclusiveness. In short, yeah, large organizations establish connectivity with their staff throughout their career and treated each of them as an asset which grow in value. I think the learning, here comes the topic. The learning can be transferred to a nation and the youth, uh, which is the topic today. A connected youth is a recipe to build future growth engines through higher growth productivity, participation, and inclusiveness. Here comes the first slide. Uh, did it change? Dr. Sheet, did you see my second slide? Cannot see the second slide. Okay, still in the first one. There you go, sorry. You can see my second slide now. Uh, I'll yes, our youth today is still millennials as part of the digital revolution, which has different set of behavioral system. And this require a different engagement approach uh, than that used for their parents' generation. We won't go into details today. And uh, one key thing that we emphasize is the relationship with the youth needs to be very long term and tracking their development and keeping their data. By keeping the records, we can afford personalized support and timely intervention to them. This is quite a different relationship with the youth. Uh, just then today, the youth, they are receiving a lot of support from different silos, from government agencies, from the, uh, from the uh, private sectors. All these youth pro programs uh, has no or little linkage between the programs. So what one of the key proposals to create this ecosystem is create a connected youth platform, which is designed to have 360 degree view and lifetime view on an individual youth. And this approach also promotes all the cross silos uh, problem that we encounter. And it results in more equitable distribution of resources to the youth. And the last point on how to approach them, we propose a user experience design approach. Uh, millennials, as most of you know, they value experience over things. Yeah. We advocate the user experience design approach, focusing on three things that we talked about just now, education, employment, and entrepreneurship. We will discuss the detail in the next slide. So this is a simple slide. Uh, the user experience design is a human first way of designing service and products. We examine the youth needs and motivation in wrong three area. On the needs of I want to learn. Learning is a lifetime uh, process. And um, I think this is a process of listening to the need of the youth, their career aspiration and changing development priorities. And I think with the platform, we can provide them a better support 
uh, more up-to-date government policies and real-life application of this so they can make a better informed uh, decision before they choose on what do they learn. And I think on the other hand, a, a platform uh, like this uh, could also provide education service provider uh, with more cost-effective uh, process, new communication tools, and new ways of attracting talents. Uh, this includes the recruitment process, virtual education fair, short courses target, uh, targeting those most likely to need it most. And on the needs of I1 employment, apart from normal job posting recruitment uh, functionalities, the platform could uh, provide something like a skill marketplace. I heard the previous speaker talking about skills. The skill and project-based approach matches with the millennial trades and new business em environment where project is preferred over long-term employment. And the platform also helps to uh, assist to capture individual activities and turn them into portable credentials what have I attended, which course have I attended, and so forth. And I want to attend, uh, and the third part is I want to start own business. Uh, I think um, we could look at the Iranian model. I think that's a very good model. Uh, one addition thing that I like to propose over here is um, for the entrepreneur youth to learn how to do business online and place their products on community marketplace. And I'll talk about community marketplace in the next slide, which is the last one. I think for the, our economy to grow, the V8 economy to grow, the micro SMEs going online is almost a certainty. And the question is the form. Uh, we anticipate the emergence of another form of online business, uh, which we term community marketplace. The community marketplace is a local e-commerce platform operated by a local brand or entity built on existing people-to-people -people relationship or body of trust and share common values on goals. For example, a tourist agency they can set up community marketplace to promote handicraft trade and connect tourists to local products and produce. Yeah, banking group could use their own brand, community brand, and marketplace to deepen their business relationship with the SMBs. The halal food of D8 could use community marketplace to provide a place uh, to sell trusted products. I think for, for this one, the, this cultivates local talent on operating online business on a local online platform rather than relying on the global e-commerce platform. And community marketplace provide online access to micro business which cannot step on the global e-commerce platform. And I think this is the um, community marketplace is the alternative online business route for our MSME and to revive the economy. I think in, in closing, uh, I think Connected Youth is a multiple stakeholder collaboration platform to provide support to our youth and grooming the resource of our future. The challenge is not on the technology, but it's actually on uh, the willingness to collaborate among the stakeholders and leadership. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Moore. Another uh, brilliant idea, if I may say so. Uh, one is, of course, when we focus on the lifetime value measurement, and the other is also uh, bringing in the uh, dimension of how we can bring and work together hand in hand uh, to take things forward. And if we could actually bring in uh, technology, that is the only way we could actually move into inclusivity. Uh, and in today, in fact, blockchain is being used particularly for the SMEs. Uh, to be able to measure not just lifetime value, but actually going beyond that. So thank you so much, Mr. Ho, for your thoughts. Uh, our last speaker for this particular session is Virginia Jani Ibrahim, who is a National Vice President of Nigerian Association of Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture. Um, and let's uh, look at the Nigerian experience. Mr. Jani Ibrahim, over to you. Bismillah uh, Rahim. Um, distinguished uh, sp uh, speakers and uh, participants, uh, I would like to adopt the protocols as expressed by His Excellency Sheikh Fahim, the new president of the DA Chamber of Commerce and uh, Industry. Uh, my presentation today on youth MSMEs and startup ecosystem for inclusive growth, you know, is supported by a World Bank assisted report by the Nigerian Federal Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment on the Digital Economy Industry Value Chain of September 2018. I'll give a general overview, you know, so that we can have an idea of what the issues are, especially in the context of the Nigerian environment. Then thereafter, 
I intend to make a few recommendations that, you know, the D8 member countries, you know, to be able to coordinate and harness how, I mean, youths, you know, can be brought in, you know, for inclusive growth. According to that report, micro, small and medium enterprises, they make a significant contribution to local employment and to overall gross domestic product. However, the economic downturn many uh, countries are experiencing due to the coronavirus pandemic to which MSMEs are especially vulnerable. It has hit these developing economies you know, very, very hard. Now, MSMEs generally, they have small reserves and limited working capital. That's our experience in Nigeria. And they rely upon a steady flow of continuous demand for their products and services. Many SMS, MSMEs will struggle to survive a prolonged period of reduced economic activity. Despite this situation, MSMEs have been touted as solutions to taking Africa out of the economic distress that this pandemic has created. And this is more so, you know, with the commencement of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which came into effect on the, on the 1st of January, 2021. Nigeria is leading Africa, you know, which is the youngest continent in the world to the D8, with a population of about 1.2 billion people and a $3 trillion market access. And nevertheless, Africa supports structure for creating and sustaining micro enterprises and small businesses during and post COVID-19 will require a strong technology component. Technology offers more automation, which ultimately leads to more company, uh, comparative yields. Technological support for Africa SMS, uh, MSMEs in the face of growing globalization, it needs to be encouraged, particularly in line with job assessments in the green economy and recognizing their roles as driving forces behind the economy. These businesses, they require leadership, research, incentives, and support towards a shared vision of African innovation backed by governments and relevant stakeholders. This is very particular, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa. It is imperative that public investment in research and development be designed to address both government and private sector initiatives and to encourage private sector investments in research and development. This ensures a sustainable model where both sectors maximize resources to support the use of innovation and emerging technologies in sustaining Africa's MSMEs. This transformation of new ideas into commercial successes, which are so important to the nation's ability to achieve economic development, employment creation, social, institutional, and market forces, such as adoption, dissemination, and transport logistics. Translating ideas means limited resources are deciding factors for their sustenance. However, innovative, they are ventures. To integrate the new demands of innovation and emerging technologies, firms and government, they must undertake an organizational effort to embrace novel methods of production, management, and dispersion. Funding for such measures requires the active participation of both public and private sectors through internal cash flows, industry levies, equity financing, amongst others. We'll just give a small example of uh, the ICT subsector in Nigeria. In the context of the Nigerian economy, the estimated size of the ICT services industry presently is about $210 million. And this is estimated to rise to $330 million by 2022. There is strong potential in the Nigerian ICT services market, which is fast growing economy encouraging investors to invest in the country. In 2012, the market for software in Nigeria was estimated at $12 billion. The dynamism has produced various investments, outsourcing and trade opportunities. Investment in the ICT sector in Nigeria is ranked second only to the oil industry. This is mainly supported by the significant rise in internet use, particularly with the rise of mobile penetration rates and also with various relevant government policies. 
the e-commerce online trading market in Nigeria is worth around $13 billion. And this is expected to rise to $50 billion in the next 10 years. The private sector is advocating that government sets up innovation funds to support MSMEs in innovation and the harnessing of emerging technologies. Funding can also be provided in kind through tax incentives, through direct funding of micro, small, and medium enterprises. Also, policies such as that of the National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA in Nigeria, and other government agencies that seek to jumpstart the local startup ecosystem you know, should be actively encouraged. For example, the government support, with government support, business processing uh, process outsourcing could become a key source of new jobs for Nigeria's young population in particular, creating 5 million direct and indirect jobs in Nigeria in the next five years. Domestic outsourcing alone, in terms of the volume of potential demand from local firms to outsourcing services, could potentially generate up to $8 billion annually. This example shows cases how the right business environment can promote youth employment and create a culture of startups, give economic and uh, economic growth and development. Income directorates be established and strengthened at the D8 Chamber of Commerce and Industry for coordination among the member countries. One, youth entrepreneurship, two, women development, and three, MSMEs and startup development. I thank you for this opportunity uh, to make this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ibrahim, uh, for your input. It has been really good to know all of the areas and how we can collaborate amongst each other. Uh, this is the end of the second session. Uh, may I start the third session, which is the last session? And this particular session, again, is focused on one other very important area, which is fairly new, which is the blue economy marine biotechnology and uh, resources. So once you move on into this particular area, I would like to pause stress on the fact which I had already started off with in the earlier session is the, it, 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 is, being, it is being said that the fifth industrial revolution will be primarily focusing on uh, human values. Blue economy, as we know, is another arm of green economy, which is uh, looking at improvement of the human well-being and social equity in particular. Uh, we have seen that particularly in nations which do have uh, ocean as uh, a connecting point, uh, the blue economy is surfacing strongly, whether it is in the area of biotechnology uh, or other mineral resources, but at the end of the day, we put to bear in mind that we cannot destroy uh, our planet. And keeping that in particular in mind, looking at the opportunities that are ahead of us. So with this few lines in this particular session, we have um, five, uh, four, in fact, speakers. Uh, we'll start off with Dr. Ala Ez, Second General, Federation of Egyptian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you please, Mr. Ez, share your experience. Thank you, Mr. Ez. Thank you, thank you, doctor. Uh, if I can share my screen. Uh, I'm not having screen uh, sharing ability at the moment. Can we, uh, does he have the provision to, for the permission to share screen? If not, could you please provide him the permission? Thank you. Friends, colleagues, it's a pleasure to be with you here today in this breakout session about blue economy, marine biotechnology, and natural resources. And I'll split it into blue and economy, each separate. And Egypt is actually the land of blue economy. We are located in the middle of all trade routes. We have access to free trade areas of 3.1 billion consumers, easy access to these regional markets, and modern ports, free zones, transit facilities. And this has been expanded by having the Continental African uh, Free Trade Agreement, which brings to the D8 partners 
a huge new market of GDP of 3.4 trillion dollars, as well as 55 nations to be part of that. And we look at our economic cooperation as a two-way road, where Egypt poses an excellent opportunity to increase exports to Egypt, as well as joint exports to third countries and use Egypt as a transit hub for that. What we're putting at the table in all sectors, including the blue economy, is D8 companies can come with technology components, licenses, quality control to Egypt for final assembly, formulation, installation, Arabization, and tackle this 3.1 billion consumer market, whether in the United, uh, European Union and EFTA and UK, Mercosur, Turkey, all of Africa, United States of America, as well as the Pan-Arab Free Trade Agreement. And let's not forget that royalty exists within the region. And Egypt, to pave the way for that direction, has been working very heavily on connecting its marine shores to Central Africa. And one of the new initiatives is the new Safagana Jamina uh, superhighway, which would link the Red Sea to Chad and from it linking with the corridor, linking Chad with uh, Dakar, hence linking the Red Sea with the Atlantic Ocean. And in marine transport, you're all aware about Egypt hosting the Suez Canal. However, in the two tips of the Suez Canal, we created two key ports. One of them is the Port Said East Port, which in a matter of three years became the second port in the Mediterranean, <coughs> offering huge potential. Our aim is revival of the old Silk Route and creating a linkage between our countries of the D8 whether in Asia, Africa, connecting through our uh, Suez Canal corridor. And the Suez Canal corridor that you've all been aware about its blockage in the past uh, few days shows its importance as a key marine blue economy uh, vessel where we've done the doubling, the depth has been dredged, but more important is the mega projects that are created around it, which includes upgrading of uh, all the Suez Canal uh, ports, whether the Ain Sokhna port on the Red Sea, where today we boast that we have achieved the master plan of 2050 in a matter of four years, and the same for Eastport Said, where today we've done the doubling as well as the new linkage to the Mediterranean. And today all our ports can accommodate the largest size of uh, vessels that can cross the canal, as well as all the ports have the simultaneous 11 pier cranes for loading and unloading simultaneously. On the other hand, Egypt in a matter of three years only just skyrocketed from being negligible in fish farming to become the number one in Africa, the number eight worldwide with around 77,000 acres of new fish farms that an example that can be replicated in all our D8 countries it's a technology, it's a know-how that has been developed locally. And today, Egypt is switching from being a net importer to a net exporter of fish. On the other hand, though we can see oil and gas as a polluting to our marine environment, however, watching out for all environmental concerns, oil and gas is a key element within our region. Egypt has switched in the past four years from being a net importer of natural gas to today being a major exporter as well as in oil, and we have achieved and attracted investments that exceed $36 billion of uh, petrochemical industries, as well as $7.5 billion are on the way during this period. And thanks to having two key LNG uh, stations, one in Damiata, the other one in Etco, where Egypt is becoming the key East Mediterranean hub for natural gas, with potential linkages to Turkey, to Lebanon, to the Arab world, as well as North Africa and the European Union. Our aim is to become the major part of the Silk Route for natural gas, where we already are part of the maritime uh, Silk Route, as well as the telecommunication Silk Route. And what's most important is funding that's available for eligible companies that are interested in the blue economy within the region. <coughs> We do annually a survey of all what's available from multilateral, bilateral donors, development funds, Arab funds, 
Islamic Fund, everybody from USAID to Japanese aid, uh, Jebek and JICA, crossing European as well as the Arab funds. And this survey covers $22 billion of grants, technical assistance software <coughs> that you can download from our website. It includes the description, the maximum, minimum, and the eligibility criteria, and who's the contact person to download this money. Moreover, Egypt offers a lot to our friends from the G8, history, culture, tradition, as well as endless sandy beaches, international education, international uh, health services, pleasant climate all year around, and a very spicy political climate. No wonder all these world leaders came to Egypt as the land of opportunities, and no wonder that Egypt has been leading uh, attracting FDI for the fifth year successively throughout Africa and the Middle East. And we invite our partners from the D8 to guide their companies on the path of these pioneers who are reaping the fruit of their early arrival. And let me close with a piece of ancient Egyptian wisdom. Come to Egypt in a tradition that summarizes the following words of ancient Egyptian wisdom. Rig your boat, travel near and far, look for a wise partner, knock his door, seek his knowledge, welcome in your home, this is how your people will prosper. This was said by King Amenhotep 4,500 years ago to the head of his commercial fleet, the first to start blue economy. And in the same spirit, we welcome you in our home. We seek your knowledge. We seek your partnership. Thank you very much. And looking forward to seeing you all again physically after this pandemic is over. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, this is one particular thing we always miss out that imagine... <laughs> The birth of blue economy took place in our part of the world, and we somehow did not use it properly. So here we have an opportunity uh, to take it forward, not yeah, just in terms of trade, to yeah, revive uh, our, we, we, our we, 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 can we keep our so therefore, uh, the revival, of course, of the uh, is, is one particular area, and the other is, of course, the advantages that have been time and again set or outlined by our Egyptian partners. Uh, we should take advantage of that as well. May I just add humbly here that Bangladesh, with its 2100 plan, is very much into the B economy. Uh, area and we do have uh, a very strong sort of plan to invest in this area in particular. Uh, our next speaker of today uh, on Blue Economy is Mr. Ahmad Mukhlis Yusuf, uh, Deputy Head of Permanent Committee for Maritime and Fishery Facilities and Infrastructure, uh, Indonesian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Mr. Ahmad, over to you, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, hopefully, I my slide uh, would be uh, would be posted. How can I get the support from committee? I uh, prepare already the uh, PowerPoint for for you to see the uh, better picture. Hopefully, uh, somebody can help me. Uh, now, as you know that uh, Indonesia is member of Asia Pacific APEC and also member of uh, Indian Ocean uh, Regional Association. So uh, we are in the situation there where we can access uh, two oceans and then uh, also the source and the huge of potential of biodiversity and also uh, we have uh, 17,000 islands and then the existing government of also pay attention to connect uh, the big islands through uh, transportation toll road and and and, and also and also the connectivity uh, among the, the islands so uh, by doing so we are trying to connect uh, all uh, all part of uh, islands to connect and then creating uh, economy. 
by doing so, we also have uh, two thirds of area uh, consists of uh, ocean. We uh, we learn how that uh, the the potential not only in fishing, not only in fishing, but also in mineral and energy and so many uh, uh, aspect of industry. Uh, at least 14 uh, sectors of industry related to each other. Uh, so uh, now I am presenting here. I'm not in Jakarta, but uh, I, I am in Majalengka. Majalengka is about only one hour to the new airport in Kalijati, and then about three uh, hours to uh, Jakarta airport. By doing so, we see that uh, toll road transportation connect that I can work any place in, in the region and connect uh, by using uh, information technology. So uh, in my presentation, I also mentioned about the storytelling, the storytelling of platform of Aruna. Aruna is a platform uh, built by young generation below 30s, and they uh, built a platform and then they invite everyone from Western Sumatra until uh, Papua to make a business. And by using the platform, everyone can uh, do trade. Uh, everyone can participate in the value chain. So Aruna is one of the platform built by younger generation. And many, many, uh, many, many also, uh, there are so many others, uh, technology platform and also uh, supporting industry uh, built by millennials and the new generation of Indonesia. As you net notice that Indonesia now is facing starting the, the what we call uh, bonus demography, that uh, the con composition of uh, the, the productive uh, ages is uh, bigger than the, the below and the upper uh, ages of uh, retirement. So uh, starting 2020 now, 2021 until uh, 2035, uh, 2040, Indonesia are facing the demographic bonus that we have more and more uh, generation, which is now also interesting compared to um, our generation. When I graduated from my, my universities, 1990, only two or three percent uh, enter to the entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial choice. But now, after uh, 1990s, if I ask the younger generation, uh, two thirds of the choice, they say they enter to the entrepreneurial uh, sector or uh, entering the business. This is promising that value creation is the language of uh, younger generation, and they also see that the, the reliance on resource, not only to the uh, to the physical uh, only, but also to the people, to the younger generation, who are very very uh, keen, and they are uh, they are born with the technology what we call with the Z, Z, uh, Z generation. So uh, I also mentioned in my presentation that uh, I'm now, apart from the platform I mentioned, Aruna, as a platform for technology, for instance, I also now uh, present the story about the circular economy. And then how uh, people tend now during COVID, uh, COVID, they are going back again to the nature and they use so many uh, opportunity, the, the, the land and also the sea provided for living. And they use uh, Indonesia we ha uh, that has uh, what we call archipelagos uh, state, more than 17 um, um, uh, 170 uh, younger generation who are productive. So my friend, uh, somebody, uh, Jack Nicklaus, I think everyone knows as uh, one of the 
the legend on golf, he said that crises are part of life. Everybody has to face uh, them, and it uh, it doesn't make any uh, different what the crisis is. Meaning that crisis is also what uh, our friend from Tiongkok or China said. Crisis is is opportunity and also threat. But we see that this is opportunity for millennials. They are born with technology. And we see uh, during first three months of crisis last year that there is a losers and winners. We see that uh, some uh, sectors are loser or affected, affected, but some of uh, sectors are loser and getting uh, the, the best time to grow. For instance, uh, of, of course, uh, fisheries, agriculture, uh, 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 livestock, and also uh, health industry, especially uh, information technology uh, rising in the last uh, the last year after COVID. And we see that uh, the adoption of many sectors to adapt technology is one of the key success factors. That by doing so, I propose that uh, everyone come from the uh, eight uh, members country, come to Jakarta, come to Indonesia, not only to Jakarta, but more than uh, 17,000 uh, islands. We are also connected by information technology and we have a telco company, a telecom who are develop the information link and also by supporting by uh, our willingness uh, of our president uh, to connect the islands by using technology. By doing so, I mentioned that everyone come from the eight uh, to Indonesia, uh, we will come with support by not only infrastructure, but also regulation, technology, and also many uh, many commitment of of new government to simplify or make it uh, the the bureaucratization or make the uh, bureaucracy easier than before. So uh, last but not least, I heard in my presentation, my friend, we are living in the era of, of the growing of millennials. We are living in the growing of uh, new technology, and then we are living in the awareness that we cannot uh, stand alone. By doing so, I urge in my presentation, I urge to use uh, coaching skill for everyone, uh, uh, members of Chamber of Commerce from every country in D9, uh, D8, uh, developing eight members' countries to uh, practice leader as a coach. Leader as a coach. We use listening, we use powerful questioning to enable, to help our people, our young generation to make decisions. And they are responsible on the decision. So at the uh, last point, uh, while we are growing, while we are seeing the growing of uh, agriculture, uh, fisheries, marine, and also some of uh, industrial and including health, we see that the younger generation millennial need a new approach or a wiser approach to grow, to make decisions and part of the leadership in future. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Uh, welcome to Indonesia. Kadin Indonesia is part of the of, uh, community or stakeholders. Welcome for everyone who come to Indonesia. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Right. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ahmed, uh, for your thoughtful presentation. Uh, two things came up, of course, mentoring is one. And the other important part which came up was the circular economic dimension of it. Uh, which is definitely related to the blue bus per se, blue economic per se. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Dr. Nuzak Khan, uh, Chairperson, Federation of Pakistan Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Standing Committee on Blue Economy. Uh, over to you, Dr. Nuzak. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon, all of you. Uh, 
thank you uh, for providing me for I can represent the Pakistan Chamber of Commerce to the economy in Pakistan. Uh, my topic. Today we are going to talk about the new economy, sustainable use of marine resources for sustainable development. And this also discussed in SDG 14. But SDG 14 can't be completed by addressing all SDGs. So we, are, we would like to uh, put some ideas or maybe share interest where we can develop our cooperations and um, uh, interests together. So I would like to avail this opportunity uh, to continue this relationship in future. And for me, this is the beginning of a relationship with the reference to the economy in Pakistan. Thank you for a big, for a new relationship. Uh, next, please. Next, please. So uh, before I introduce the uh, interest, uh, let me introduce my area. Uh, this is um, approximately 1,000 uh, kilometer of coastline of Pakistan, uh, sharing one border, Iran and uh, India. And this is our um, coastal belt and it stretches over in the sharing oceans, Northern Arabian Sea. Uh, we have approximately 2,000, 200 square kilometer nautical mile of our EEZ. We have exclusive economic zone 2040, but we get it extended for 50 more thousand. Uh, in 2015, we, uh, we submitted our case and get it approved by UN. So now our uh, coastal area EZ is 299,000. So here I, I may provide you an offer and assistance if uh, the agencies would like to get it expanded their coastal area or maritime area. We have done it. We may provide you services and cooperation and facilities in their area. They're open uh, for any assistance if you are looking. Yeah, this is the extended area. So this is our um, shared uh, in northern Indian Ocean. Uh, we are sharing uh, Gulf and other things, and this is about 72% of world oil flow. So there is an opportunity for business and there's a threat for oil pollution as well. So this is the area which uh, we are sharing with. Next. Next. So um, uh, th this is the um, challenges we have. These are the area which we had, that these are challenges in our area and same for the uh, countries as well. And uh, this is human smuggling, um, for tracking, drugs, uh, smuggling, piracy and many more. These are the threat and issues of our area. If we get together, we may resolve these issues. Or we may address combinedly with these issues. We need to work um, the, collectively to address this kind of smuggling and piracy and uh, arms and uh, other things as well in, in our areas, in broader perspective. So this is... Uh, uh, Again, uh, the, and global oceans are facing uh, pollution, especially uh, pollution from land-based sources, uh, particularly plastic pollution and marine life is under threat. So we need to address and make a program globally, regionally, and with the uh, shared uh, interest countries. So we may address a global program on uh, to mitigate, to address plastic pollution. It's the biggest threat for our um, biodiversity in our region. Again, uh, we are, as we are sharing uh, the shipping and ship routes, and there is a problem with biofouling plus glass water. So we have developed our laboratories to address and to analyze these uh, uh, invasive species. So we need to have a collective DA program for uh, not just for plastic pollution, for glass water analysis and mitigations, and uh, we need to address these issues collectively. Uh, especially biofouling and lost water issues. And this is a regional and a, a collective issue for all of us. So uh, these are the issues where um, I would like to um, introduce few more area for cooperation, especially uh, uh, marine fisheries and aquaculture. Uh, this uh, area is contributing much for, uh, for us 
and for neighboring countries as well and D countries and D eight countries as well. We'd like to learn from each other experience and knowledge to enhance these capacity to address food scarcity, shortage of food. So we need to address more than ever. So we uh, have to be get together and to work on aquaculture and marine fisheries and protection of marine fisheries and protected area as well. Here, I would like to add more for common interest where I would like to learn, especially from Indonesia, the seaweed resources. And there is, uh, Pakistan is not very famous for seaweed product, uh, product, production means uh, value added product, but we have abundance of seaweed in our, on our coastal area. So I would like to learn uh, the halal uh, cosmetics, halal food on this seaweed. If somebody can help me out in developing the project on especially the halal cosmetics using seaweeds or other marine resources, I'm much open for having that kind of project and uh, business ventures uh, on that. Uh, if the neighboring countries or the eight countries may help us out in developing that kind of technologies in Pakistan. Uh, shipbuilding industries and shipbroking industry, these are other two main areas where we can work collectively. Uh, we have uh, shipbuilding industries and shipbreaking as well. So we need to learn more environmental sustainability of these areas, more business ventures for these areas. So I look forward to have more on, uh, a, more interaction in future on shipbuilding and shipbreaking industries and more collectively uh, for environmental sustainability as well. And uh, the most important thing which we need to learn from each other experience is energy crisis, uh, like uh, tidal energy, wind energy, or wind mills or offshore this mill. These are the area where Pakistan is very open to have interaction or interventions on these areas for this, especially for addressing energy crisis. If um, if we can uh, share our experience and knowledge on developing projects on these lines. And there's the opportunity for tourism as well. Pakistan has a beautiful coastline uh, from mountains, uh, cliff, rocky beaches to sandy and the uh, mangrove forest and the other potential for marine tourism in Pakistan as well. So we can do that in, in this area for highlighting um, uh, halal tourism or tourism, marine tourism. On this area next and these are very unique um, uh, feature of pakistan coast mud, mud volcanoes we have methane gas on our coastal area they're rich in this uh, action so so uh, the world is around the sixth generation fuel the methane and uh, our makran coastal area is a rich and uh, methane uh, uh, mud volcanoes or methane availability Similarly, we have a uh, creek, indus Altai Creek system is open for uh, tidal energy interventions. And we do have other hydrocarbons in our areas as well. So we are uh, here, uh, the tidal energy and wave energy where we want to receive more corporations and project development on these area. And we have done some basic research if you want. We can help you out for basic research and but technological uh, interventions we need to develop that. Next, please. The air call slide, please, Italy. No? Actually, uh, one more. Um, uh, we have established um, FEPCCI Standing Committee on Blue Economy. The idea for this Standing Committee on Blue Economy is to, as I mentioned earlier, is to introduce these kind of projects to our young scientists or entrepreneurs or technology development. And this forum is provide them an opportunity to come forward and work on these um, the new interventions of blue economy. And ocean is not new for us, uh, but blue economy name is something new for us. We need to harness and harvest our uh, these resources. So this forum is open for all entrepreneur in Pakistan and D8 countries and others as well. Uh, next, please. Thank you very much. This is my most daring or uh, um, dear uh, picture in the end. The last picture, last uh, I I love this chair. This is a small guy. He's an entrepreneur. He's just trying to explore the uh, ocean uh, by using a man-made or a very small uh, boat, which is invented 
for her pleasure and for uh, resource exploration. I would like to be, and we would like to be like that explorer. So um, thank you for uh, this forum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Nozat, uh, for the last picture in particular. I mean, it's really exploration can have no end. So that is what it primarily implies. The other important point, which time and again has come up, is the uh, particularly halal economy and the halal market. It has already crossed a trillion dollar, and therefore uh, we think that this is one particular area that we need to actually push on to. Uh, our last speaker for today is Mr. Yakub Fakar, Project Manager of Economic Policy Research uh, Foundation of Turkey. So let's again uh, remind all of us about the time frame. Uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Yakub. Thank you, Salam alaikum for everyone. I will, uh, I'm sorry. I will follow a, a framework maybe to uh, to be different, uh, as a general to specific approach. Uh, I will start with the uh, general terms, uh, general issues about uh, blue economy and then uh, continue to uh, continue to the concrete uh, steps should be taken uh, for cooperation uh, among uh, developing case countries. Uh, starting with the definition, uh, indeed, uh, there are different definitions of the blue economy. Uh, sometimes uh, it is stated that uh, as blue growth, but uh, the uh, union or uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, common thing, uh, common definition, common simple simple definition could be sustainable use of uh, ocean-related resources for economic growth, sustainable jobs, and increasing life quality of human beings. Uh, and this term is uh, first introduced in the, in, uh, the UN Conference uh, on Sustainable Development uh, in Rio in 2012. Uh, so it's new and developing nowadays. Uh, why uh, this term is getting is getting more important nowadays? Uh, it is because uh, blue economy includes a value of value uh, a huge value uh, in terms of production, employment, and other economic measures. Uh, first, uh, it, uh, it is estimated as two two and a half trillion US dollars, uh, which is annually increase uh, annually increasing around. Uh, around 10 percent. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, developing case countries as a whole uh, is uh, our, uh, economic value is around uh, 3.8 uh, uh, trillion US dollars in 2017, uh, which is uh, which shows the ocean related assets is very uh, shows the ocean related assets are a very uh, huge amount. Also, fishing, aquaculture, seaside, and marine tourism employs over uh, 350 million people, which is uh, not, which is also a high amount. Uh, lastly, uh, blue economy activities uh, such as fishing and etc. provide a livelihood for uh, nearly one to one billion people around the world. Uh, there are also some figures uh, about business opportunities of the about uh, blue economy, such as uh, marine fishes, uh, marine businesses, uh, renewable energy, biotechnology, which is uh, which are stated uh, mostly other participants also. So I, due to time availability, I will continue to to, to other uh, issues, uh, other uh, parts of my uh, presentation. Uh, so how could we uh, how could we approach how could we utilize those uh, resources in an optimal way? Uh, I will uh, show. Uh, I will uh, propose two uh, dimensions of the uh, blue, blue economy strategy for uh, developing to eight countries uh, as a whole. First, uh, we should follow an integrated strategy. What I mean is uh, there are two uh, issues, two, two dimensions of uh, those integrating strategy. The former is uh, not focusing on only certain sectors. But approach ocean-related resources as a whole, as an ecosystem. 
This is because uh, those resources are very dependent to each other, affecting uh, each other very high, at a very high level. In fact, economic or non-economic human activities uh, also affecting those resources, while they are also affecting, affected by those resources. Those resources also shape our economic activities, but economic activities also shape our shape uh, those uh, those resources. Let me introduce with a uh, quick example. If you make overfishing uh, of certain species, uh, this will increase or decrease certain uh, other certain species uh, in the ecosystem, and this will change your resource allocation in the upcoming years. Uh, hence, sector level or sector wise uh, optimal point may not be the optimal use of ocean uh, related resources as a whole. Uh, Another issue, what what we need is to build models in order to quantify those interactions uh, among uh, climate, uh, business activities, and ocean-related resources, uh, including some uh, scenarios, developed some scenarios, and economic cut base for us, uh, in order to be uh, in order to be ready for actions. Uh, to preserve our resources uh, as a whole. The latter issue about the integrated strategy is the is about cooperation of between cooperation of different groups such as public and private sectors and even civil society. However, uh, this cooperation should not be only at a national level. Uh, we we. We do. Uh, we will uh, collaborate each other uh, at uh, at uh, international level. For example, EU countries are supporting sea basin strategies to ensure tailor-made measures. Uh, as SEPA, we are also a partner in a Horizon uh, project uh, for uh, developing a, a strategy for the Black Sea region, Black Sea basin. Uh, those type of types of collaboration. Uh, are possible and important for developing case countries also. Defining those collaborations with the legal framework are also important for maritime security, which is also stated uh, in a participant uh, presentation also. My last, uh, uh, my last slide is about what are the possible concrete steps in order to, in order to go, uh, in order to utilize those uh, opportunities, uh, those resources in the economy. Uh, start with this, we need to think that there are uh, fixed and non-ocean related resources and also the potential ones. In order to utilize fixed ones and unleash the potential of the uh, others, we need uh, technical and technological studies. Those might be multidisciplinary and multi-country uh, studies, uh, as I mentioned before. Second, to fund those uh, kinds of strategies in a more practical way, startups, startups which are uh, conducting ocean-related services could be supported. Those supported could not only be uh, in a financial way, but also via accelerator programs and et cetera. Last but not least, increasing awareness will, be, will also be important in order to provide enough human resources for tech, those technical studies and civil society action. Since blue economy term is uh, a bit new, as I said, we need to increase consciousness of the society in our countries and enhance the, uh, enhance our potential partners who we will study in this area. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Yusuf, uh, particularly for showing us the integration dimension of it, and also bringing in the women uh, as a very important part. Uh, may I now move on and request Mr. Sheikh Fazli Fahim, our honorable president, to sum up and to actually uh, move for the joint declaration of the business forum. Over to you, Mr. Sheikh Fazli Fahim. Uh, you're muted. Uh, unmute, please. Find your muted. 
uh, I think it's the CEOs, uh, Mr. CEO is supposed to uh, share the joint declaration with everyone. CEO, will you please, uh, Mr. Mohammed Mahfuz al Haq, would you kindly share the joint declaration, please? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for the respected speakers of the breakout session two and three. And also thanks, many thanks to the respected professor, Dr. Sayyad Anwar Farhat for moderating two session, honorable director of the IBA, Dhaka University. We are really grateful to you. Now it's time to declare the joint declaration. I am reading out the declaration for all and the of D8 Business Forum, which we have already shared with the members of the D8 CCI. We have made the amendments as the ad advice, advice of the D8 member countries. Now I'm reading the joint declaration of D8 Business Forum held on the sideline of the 10th D8 Summit Dhaka, April 5, 2021, Dhaka. The D8 Business Forum was organized virtually by the Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FBCCI, in partnership with the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey, TOBB, and D8 Chambers of Commerce and Industry, D8 CCI, on the sideline of the 10th D8 Summit on April 5, 2021, Dhaka. Representatives from all the nation, national chambers of the eight countries participated in the business forum as mentioned below. Number one, the Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FBCCI. Number two, Federation of Egyptian Chambers of Commerce. Number three, Indonesian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Number four, Iran Chamber of Commerce, Industries, Mines and Agriculture. Number five, National Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Malaysia. Number six, Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Mines and Agriculture. Number seven, the Federation of Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industry. And the last, not least, number eight, the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey, TOB. The D8 Business Forum comment commemorated the birth centenary of father of the nation of Bangladesh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. D8 Business Forum expressed its sincere thanks and appreciation to the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchanges of Turkey, and especially the president of top, Mr. Rifat Hizar Jikliulu, for his leadership commitment and devoted efforts in promoting the D8 objectives during the chairmanship of the D8 Chambers of Commerce and Industries. The meeting was commended the good work of TOP in order to reinvigorate and institutionalize the D8 CCI by forming close cooperation with the D8 Secretariat. The meeting also expressed his appreciation to the D8 Secretary General, His Excellency Ambassador Dato Kuzafar Kushari, and his team for prioritizing the engagement of the D8 business community. As Bangladesh is taking the chairmanship of D8 in the 10th D8 Summit in Dhaka, Mr. Sheikh Fuzle Fahim, President of the Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry, has assumed the term of the presidency of D8 CCI from Rifat Hizar Jiklios Lu, the president of the Union Chambers of Presidency of the D8 Chambers of Commerce and Industries from Rifat Hizar Jikliolu, president of the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchange of Turkey for the term of Bangladesh's chairmanship of D8. During the plenary session of the D8 Business Forum, presidency of D8's Chamber of Commerce and Industries was handed over to Mr. Sheikh Fozle Fahim for the whole term of Bangladesh's chairmanship of D8. Following the plenary session, three breakout sessions were held 
the first breakout session was held titled integration of technology and innovation among the da where representatives from the member national chambers of da cci addressed on mutual cooperation among da countries in the areas of integration of science and technology innovation and high tech research in business and investment expert speakers from d8 countries addressed and placed their recommendations at the second breakout session titled youth msmes and startup ecosystem for inclusive growth and third breakout session titled blue economy marine biotechnology and resources the business forum identified the areas of cooperation and meaningful engagement with particular fo focus on trade and investment through capacity building technology and knowledge sharing business forum stressed on improvement of connectivity in all d8 countries as connectivity is the basis of economic integration by interaction the business forum emphasized on mutual cooperation and collaboration for further development of youth msmes and startup ecosystem blue economy marine biotechnology and resources for inclusive growth of d8 countries the current covid-19 outbreak is volatile and its impact on the economy is uncertain the pandemic impacted lives and global economy in this situation d8 business forum stressed on developing an innovative collaboration mechanism among the d8 member states particularly in health sector the business forum also agreed for extensive collaboration for sharing best practices lesson learned knowledge and technology business forum agreed to strategize trade recovery through d8 value chain initiatives of technology transfer business process applied skills science and technology industry academic linkages maximizing d8 nations impact within each other and beyond based on shared resources and knowledge number 10 business forum stressed on involvement of technologies to facilitate trade investment production and supply present technology trends are dominated by areas such as fintech edtech clean tech health tech agri tech e-commerce etc among its others capacity building and skills development through collaboration among training institutes among the eight member states will have a significant impact on industries in the region number 11 business forum emphasized on mechanization digitization and automation in both quality and quantity quantity of agriculture production and food security meaningful collaboration in the areas of farm mechanization food processing and fisheries and aquaculture would be given priority number 12 business forum emphasized to work on potential marine resources for the sustainable evolution of blue blazed commercial products sustainable use of this marine based natural products would help in modern day application of pharmaceuticals and food industries number 13 dhaka d8 business forum further consolidated economic cooperation among the d8 communities by boosting intra trade and working towards achieving higher economic development and benefiting the people of the member states an intra da trade analysis will be carried out to identify gaps and opportunities potential areas and sectors product groups or products that are in the top in terms of their import and export volumes between the da countries last 14 
not the least. The HCCI will follow up the recommendations and make sure that in cooperation with the H Secretariat and member, member chambers in an action plan is to be prepared and executed. If there is no other comments, this and we, we can consider it as adopted. Is there any comment? Just that circular economy, because that is one area and halal. Halal and so circular. Thank you very much. Now we are end end of the business forum where we have had some successful sessions, breakout sessions and plenary sessions. I would like to sincerely thank the honorable ministers and the respected chamber leaders of the eight countries, business leaders and experts, all the speakers and participants who made this business forum exclusive and unbeaten. Your valuable thoughts, opinions and advice will contribute to accelerate the cooperation and collaboration of the eight member states. I once again thank you, all of you, and thank especially top D8 Secretariat, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh, Kadin Indonesia, NSCCI MA Nigeria, ICCI MA Iran, NCCI M Malaysia, FED COC Egypt, Federation of Pakistan Chambers and Commerce and Industries, for all of your support. I would like to thank respected president of FBCCI, Mr. Sheikh Fozle Fahim for encouraging and guiding us to arrange the forum. My sincere thanks will be to my colleagues, Mr. Mamunur Rahman and Ms. Nazia Hassan Khundakar for their efforts and 24 seven involvement in making this event a success. It was a tough job to coordinate the schedule with the leaders from so many different countries, which would have not been possible without the consistent hard work. It is my pleasure to con congratulate once again, Mr. Sheikh Fazle Fahim for assuming the new chair of the DHCCI. As FBCCI has assumed the chairmanship of DHCCI, we are determined to work together more intensively in future. We hope you all, all you, you all are staying safe and healthy in this pandemic. Thank you all for joining us and making the event a success. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thank you. Good seeing you. Thank you very much. Staying more Thank than you. four hours with us. It was yes. a pleasure. For the next session, we'll stick to time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. Congratulations, Thank you. Mr. President, and thanks to the team of TOB for all the support they've been providing in the past period. Good seeing you, Dr. Aliza. Uh, we have been trying to get a hold of you for a long time. Dr. Aliza, is disposal any time, Your Excellency. Dr. Aliza, uh, everybody is trying to get hold of you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's I'm the here. problem. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Aliza, everybody is trying to get hold of 